Hey, hey, what's up? What's up, Tom? Hey, how are you, Ruth? I'm doing good, man. Thank you good, so much good. for being here. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad to uh, finally make it. Exactly, exactly. Everybody, for those of you who don't know, Tom was supposed to be my guest a couple of weeks back, and yeah. he got sick 24 hours before the showtime. And uh, thankfully, thank you, by the way, for giving me those 24 hours to you know, at least know yeah. that you know, I wasn't going to be able to come up with anything else, uh, uh, at least show and tell wise. I know? debated, could I make it? Could I, could it, was yeah. my voice going to come back? Finally, I just said, I was too risky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's good. It's a smart, it's a, you did the smart thing, you know, just in case or whatever. So I appreciate it. Um, so yeah, everybody, there you go. Happily, uh, Tom is healthy again and back with us and um, ready to do a show and tell. Tell us a little bit about himself so we all get to learn a little bit more about Tom. Um, for those of you who don't know anything about Tom, Tom is actually, um, like several of my other guests have been, um, only uh, collecting comic book art for five, six years, was it, Tom? Yeah, just about five years, just before the pandemic. I wasn't one of those yeah. guys that got squeezed in because of the pandemic. I just started collecting some pieces. I had finally met George Perez, and that kind of rekindled my interest in going back to some original art that I had had as a kid, and that's what started it in 2019. That's that's amazing. It, it's it's uh, bittersweet, of course, but uh, it it's was. Nice. It's nice that you got to meet him at least that late in his life, you know? Yeah, I was a huge fan, you know, like so many of us growing up, um, buying the Titans number one, and that was my first introduction to him. Then, oh. <clears throat> you know, at the same time, he had taken over uh, Justice League, and uh, that was my first exposure to him. But I didn't go to conventions as a kid. Um, even though in Chicago they were always there, I just didn't go. Yeah. So wow. finally in 2019, I was like, eh, you know, I need to do some things to, you know, kind of rekindle my own excitement about life. And I flew to uh, Buffalo, drove up to the uh, Comic-Con up in uh, Buffalo or in uh, Niagara Falls. That's where he was. Okay. And had that dinner thing that he was doing his retirement. And that's what really kicked off me starting to collect art. Oh, wow. Very cool. Very cool. Okay. Um, well, we'll get into that in a, in a couple of minutes, but if you don't mind, Tom, uh, let me just say hello to see who else is uh, popping into the uh, room uh, that will be joining us for the, hopefully the rest of the evening. Um, who do we have? I know we had Mr. Red Jack early because I know he had to uh, go to work tonight as always. So I know uh, you're only probably hearing this on Rewind later, uh, Brian. So I appreciate you as always. Thank you so much for uh, dropping by and uh, welcoming everyone. And who else do we got that is here now? Of course, number one Marvel fan. And you're the number one live guy today. Three minutes before we went live. Nice. I appreciate you. The Rickster, good evening to you, my friend. Sam Maroney, Ohio. What's up, Sam? Good to see you. Jason Ladwig, my friend. What is up, my friend? Lovely to see you as always as well. Oklahoma in the house. What's up, Dwayne Zapane? Good to see you. Hope you're doing well. CJ, you know what? I knew somebody was going to say it. Get your zip up hoodie on. I came figuring, okay, I'm going to do it again. I will show up the same way I showed up in the uh, in the, uh, in the the graphic, the thumbnail. But Tom did not show up with the I hoodie. I didn't think of that. I got it in the closet. I didn't think <laughs> That's that. okay. Right We're not going to be... Yeah, we're not going to be hoodie bros tonight. That's all. No, that was a little weird, yeah. <laughs> but that's okay. Appreciate seeing you here as always, CJ. So thank you. And um, sit. Exactly. Exactly, Marcus. What's up? Good to see you. Let's try to keep it under five hours tonight. Yeah, don't worry about it. No, no, no. It's not going to be a, It's not going to be a double episode tonight. No worries. Jesus Cabrera, what is up? Good to see you, sir. And uh, hi, Tom from Chicago and Ruben the Canadian. Hey, CJ. <laughs> a wide I saw so Gabe in there too. Hey, Gabe. What do you mean, uh, Carlos? What do you mean, why so early? I don't know what you mean. Starting at the usual time. The usual time is 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 Central, um, 5, West, uh, 5 West Coast. So, yeah. I think you got it wrong, my friend. Jeff Wedding, what is up, Mr. Las Vegas? Uh, my lovely wife, thank you for the support as always, honey. And, uh, oh, John Brown, as always, as ever. Good evening to you, my friend. Lovely to have you as ever. All the vestiges of the vests are gone. Yes, they are indeed, Marcus. I've got to, you know, I've said it before. I typically don't like to dress up. I like to be more relaxed and casual. You know that. 
Ah, there you go. My wife is saying hello to you, Tom. <laughs> she's she's my welcome wagon she's not that's in the awesome. hobby not, she, she's not in the hobby but she's she, she just likes to support well women. she's in the hobby um through you <laughs> yeah well there you go and tom had the jitters no he 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 got sick two weeks ago he did not have two the weeks i'm good now yeah yeah that shows i was long. sick yes what's up game what's up man and yes, please, thank you, CJ, for always reminding. I'm not good at that, but uh, thank you, everybody. If you could hit the thumbs up, uh, sorry, the thumbs up uh, icon that's somewhere right beneath where I'm pointing here. I'd be very appreciated. Uh, don't need to subscribe if you're not subscribed. That's fine. But if you can hit the, the thumbs up, would I really appreciate that. And Carl's Collection, what is up, Carl? Good to see you, sir. Carl, everybody, Carl has a... New video out and not on original art this uh, this particular one, but um, about a collection. For those of you who are DC fans and Superman fans in particular, DC is finally starting a plan to to start um, reprinting the try the, all the Superman stories from the Triangle era. Um, so they just announced the, uh, an omnibus that starts that off. And um, Carl, uh, Carl's latest video. Um, actually, I'll 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 show you guys if you want to open it up in case you're not subscribed to his channel already. Carl's latest video is a video. It's about 20, 24 minutes, something like that. Um, here you can go check it out in the chat with this direct link. Um, he talks about it. So if you guys are who never read Superman in that era, want to know a little bit about it and see if it sounds interesting, I would say to uh, please check it out. Um, it was, I would say, Superman comics' greatest era. Um, better than anything that came pre-crisis that I've ever read. And the era lasted quite a long. It was, it was The Superman titles were really good for years, not just a few months. So I would say the best best era for Superman comics of all time. So... I would say, yeah, uh, anybody wants to read Superman, that's a great place to start. So check that out. Um, hey, Shaggy Wong is in the house. What's up, Shaggy Wong? And Shaggy Wong says, that was a good show, Niagara Falls. He was yeah. there, Tom. It was yeah, gorgeous. Shaggy, I'm glad someone who else was there was in the chat. Um, I have a good. YouTube video. I recorded George's little kind of thank you to everybody at the end of the night. And I'll see if Ruben can kind of post that in the show notes because it's out on YouTube. Uh, and every, every once in a while, I look at it just to bring those memories back. Sorry, what did you want me to post, uh, Tom? Oh, it's um, I've got a recording of George at that Niagara Falls. It was a dinner event. And oh. at the end, after dinner, he, he kind of thanked everybody and talked about his career. So um, I'll try to get that out to you guys so everybody can see that. Damn, Shaggy, I, wish if, I, yeah. I wish we would have planned that so we could have put it up and watched it live together. I can send it to you in a minute if you want. Yeah, okay, you can try. I don't know, but then I've got to save it. I got to download right, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, we'll and then upload it. it. But I don't know, maybe yeah. like next week or something. I don't have yeah, to do it next, next week. week. So maybe right. uh, that'll be, be good. Fun thing. But yeah, email it to me later or whatever, you know? Good. Uh, how, how long is it out of curiosity? Oh, it's just a couple minutes. You know, oh, okay. A couple minutes of him speaking to everybody. Oh. Um, yeah, it was it was really kind of nice. Okay, cool. Uh, Richard Rillo, been a minute, my friend. Good to see you, man. What is up? Yes, sir. The Triangle Era. Exactly. And, uh, uh, oh, Margaret. What's up, Margaret? Lovely to have you here again tonight. And, um, oh, Dwayne DePain says, Carl Channel is great. It is. It is. Go check it out, everybody, if you haven't checked it out yet. And we need to support each other, especially all those tinier channels, you know? And finally, it's about time that they officially, yes, exactly. Exactly, Carl. Um, pulling all the comics to read, have them all. That's in the Omni, um, right? Well, sure, of course. You've got four stores. You should have them all in in regular comic format. And uh, having a blast chatting about this stuff. Exactly. It's it's a lot of fun, Carl. So keep doing it. Keep doing it. We need more choice. You know, that's what makes it fun. So, um, Carlos says, I hope the video is five hours long. If you're talking about Tom's uh, video, uh, clearly at two minutes, he's a little. He's about. Four hours, 58 minutes short of five hours. Um, but hopefully, um, yeah, hopefully I can, you know, post it next week. It'll be a, a couple of minutes we can uh, enjoy that for. So that'll be fun. Nick's is not coming on tonight, but hopefully he'll be in the chat a little later to say hello. 
and rally the likes. Thank you, Margaret. I'm glad. I'm glad that you feel so. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, but don't be shy to leave and get your studies done. Uh, Nick will jump on in hour three. Exactly. Like he typically does. Or maybe hour two. Sometimes even in hour one. So you never know with Nick. Uh, Carlos, it was fun doing the five-hour show, but it was wasted. I was wasted all day at work. <laughs> That's what happened. Look at that, Tom Kantalovsky, the other Tom from Chicago. By the way, two Toms. I didn't from know there were two Toms from Chicago. Yeah, imagine. I had no idea. Two Toms in Chicago collecting comic art. That's pretty cool. Yeah, well, that's awesome. Good to see we you, have Tom. To connect. Yeah, you guys should for sure. Yeah, some of the crossover tie-ins had no triangles on the cover. I guess that's true. I don't remember. It's been a long time for me. Hey, happy Sunday to you, Alberto. Good to see you. And Dan Evan, good to see you, man. Hello, hello. We are not. They already asked, and we, we will not be, and we will not be. Probably around three, though, like the kind of standard, you know? So there you go. And sorry, you know what? I'm going to just shut down my email so I don't hear the constant. Uh... There we go. More email notifications. There we go. Okay. Um, hey, look at that, Hydra. We were just chatting, and Hydra's here. I thought you were going to be, um, I thought you were going to be busy and not here tonight, Hydra. But uh, lovely to have you, of course, as always. I appreciate it. Okay, um, let me, everybody, before we get into the show and tell with Tom, let me quickly do. Um, I believe. Let me check if there's another problem. First of all, I wanted to say real quick. Um, just a quick shout out. Thank you to uh, my newest uh, sub. There was only one for the for the week. Um, but again, anonymous. So that's probably like 14 in a row anonymous. I'm kind of convinced now that YouTube changed something so that channel owners are no longer able to know the names of um, people who have subscribed. But oh well, so I'll never be able to shout you guys out like I've always done. Uh, but thank you, Anonymous. I appreciate it nonetheless, and I hope you tune in sometime on the live show. That's where uh, it's a lot more fun to interact with all of us. And, um, oh, speaking of Nikki B, we got kind of the full house at the moment. So here we go. Let me do this right now. So it's already done by the time he gets here. Um, Everybody, please remember to tune in if you can, if you've not been there before, especially if you like to buy art, um, usually affordable art, sometimes higher end art. Um, check out the EXP. That's the original art experience. And that can be found on, right here on YouTube, youtube.com slash the EXP every Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 o'clock Pacific. And... Um, Nick basically offer it's a it's a it's a claim show slash talk show, um, so you're not going to get a ton of art because it's both talking and um, yeah hanging out and selling art, um, but it's relaxing. It's a nice fun way to relax to end your work week. So if you can uh, uh, tune in, check that out. That would be appreciated. And for this um, upcoming uh, week's show. I actually have, I'll, pop, I'll, pop, I'll uh, pop in here into the chat. Um, that's this coming Friday show, everybody. There's a chat being, uh, a ch sorry, ch not a chat, a, uh, a link being popped into the chat. Uh, hopefully that works for you. And that's for this coming Friday show, a direct link right to it. Only took me 10 minutes as usual to find it because Nikki and his employees didn't send it to me. And I found it just as I was about to give up looking. Um, so there you go, Nick. I hope you appreciate that. Um, yeah, so check that out, everyone. What a great place to pick up affordable art um, and yes. get into the hobby. That's, that's yes. one of my first pieces was from Nick getting into the hobby. There you go. So exactly, yeah. everyone. Exactly. So that's what we've always pushed. That's why I've always promoted Nick's show because it is um, primarily the idea behind it was to promote the hobby itself by trying to bring in and entice newer collectors. And how do you do that in an expensive hobby? Well, by offering much more affordable, lower cost artwork, you know? Um, and yeah, like Tom said, Tom Tom was one of those guys who, who you know, one of his first pieces was by uh, claiming a piece uh, on, on the EXP. So yeah. there you go. Um, if you haven't checked that out, you should check that out. And like I said, it's on every Friday. So same time, same channel always. 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 o'clock Pacific. So there you go. All right. 
Um, with that being said, I do believe that that's the last promo for me for tonight. Um, no new video for Karen. No new video for uh, Jason at Comic Art Channel. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, Lee Parmeter and him and his new channel um, doing unboxings. He did not do another new one since last week. So nothing there. Um, so that's it for tonight. So um, with that being said, uh, Tom, you ready to get the show on the road? Yeah, let's do it. All right, man. So um, typically um, what we always do here before we get into the first piece of art is um, the, 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 the theory sort of a plan, if you will, behind my shows, uh, particularly the, the show and tells was always, you know, even though most people think that the show and tell is all about the showing and the telling of the artwork. Um, some people don't know this, but for me, more important than the actual showing and sharing of artwork, the reason I wanted to do that as, as, a, as a regular series is actually because I find it's a great way for myself and for other people to meet other collectors who we would otherwise only know as a name that we occasionally see pop up in other chats, you know, on CAF, whatever, you know, and you don't really get to know people that way. So um, for me, that's really what I like most about it is getting to know and the, the banter between all of us, you know, and and so, so to me, the way I've always looked at, at the show and tell series is that the showing of the collector's artwork and talking about it is actually just a bonus to the getting to know each other part of it all and, and just everybody commiserating together, you know, and, and building community together. So, um, yeah. So um, with that being said, if you don't mind, um, perhaps uh, let us all know a little bit about yourself, uh, yeah. how you got into, if you want, I mean, listen, it's, it's, it's primarily a comic art panel, but if you want to, I, I'm always interested in knowing how people got into comic books themselves a little bit, not to spend too much time on it, yeah, um, but tell us a little bit about that, and then how it ultimately segued into comic into the art. art. Yeah. yeah, so I'm lucky enough. I have a piece of art from the very first comic uh, I ever bought, or I should say, my parents bought for me, which was Action Comics 463. It was a Kurt Swan Goofy Bicentennial issue from 1976, oh, cool. and uh, <clears throat> I often wonder how different my collection would be had that first. Um, uh, comic than a Marvel comic as opposed to a DC comic um, because obviously right. they're very different because I'm a I'm a, a DC guy um, but uh, obviously the Marvel path would have been very different from a collector standpoint which has its pros and cons yeah. Uh, but yeah so we were on a trip to Tennessee my family was going down to the Smoky Mountains I got a bag of three comics these would come in those three ply bags and and that's yeah. where I got into the the collecting. Um, there were three bags, uh, or three comics in that bag, and I've got art from one. Eventually, I want to get art from those two other comics if I can find it. Um, but, um, you know, I grew up, you know, kind of centered smack dab in the, in the Bronze Age. Um, so there was Adam Zapero, um, Mike Grell, all the DC artists that, yeah. you know, you, you kind of really want to grow up with um, across the board. Dick Dillon was a huge, you know, a huge fan of Dick Dillon that transition to, to Perez as well. Um, and when I started to realize that, um, um, you know, very late in my life, that, well, there are numbers of comics you can get, you know, the light bulb never went off for me, like collect the art, not the comic, right? Yeah, yeah. It's only one of those pages, right? Um, yeah. It didn't go off for me to very, very late in life, you know? Yeah. So when I did start collecting, I had all these long boxes, you know? I wanted a Joe State, I wanted a Brian, Ballin from Camelot 3000. I wanted yeah. those pieces, right? So that's what drove it, which, you know, I tried not to buy anything that wasn't in a long box downstairs. Right. You mean, you mean like, you mean art that wasn't from a comic that you owned in a long box? That's what drove me, is it? If yeah. I, I, you know, because you can yeah. get really, you know, get really distracted. There's a lot of art out oh, yeah. there. Um, you know, we call them, we call, we call them, we call those distract, those distract, uh, distractions in this hobby squirrels. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Squirrel. Right. Yeah. And it took me a while to figure out what was I going to collect? You know, for a while I tried to collect really cool artists that, you know, everybody else was collecting, but it didn't feel it. I didn't feel it here. I right? like that. I yeah. like that. 
Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I didn't, like yeah, you go through that phase. Well, if, if, if every, this artist is popular, I want to get some of that art. But if it, it didn't resonate with me and I yeah. found it, I'm just going to sell it off. So it took me a while to get my understanding of what I wanted to do as a yeah. collector. Right? I, I, can't, Tom, I can't tell you honestly how much I love hearing that because yeah. it really was and is a very common thing to do. You know, you kind of get in, you look around, you see what other people are buying. And you're like, oh, yeah, a lot of people buy those most popular artists, the guys that were known as the bigger names back in the day, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And you feel like you do. There's this sort of impulse that makes you feel like I got to do the same. Yeah, of course I'm going to do the same, you know. And then you buy it. And it, it kind of happened to me too. And I was like, you know, after a while, I was just like, I mean, I love them. But somehow it didn't feel like those were necessarily the pages I needed to, to keep the most and that I love the most. I mean, I realized a lot of the stuff I loved were not necessarily the ball ins and the George Perez and Byrne and you know well, you I mean? got your yeah you got your big Grumman collection right yeah 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 and exactly. you know you you probably have the best Grumman collection on on, on cap right because that guy means a lot to you he's Canadian you know and, and that's that's yeah that's what you that's what you try to do uh, yeah. you know Jim Lee I was like there's a hush page oh everybody likes Jim Lee it's a hush page maybe I should, and I I bought it and I was like this doesn't mean much to me so you know I wound up selling it because it, yeah. I, he didn't, you know, he, he was later, you know, I was already, yeah. you know, kind of grown totally up when did. G Lee was, was doing his thing. So it took me a yeah. while to figure out where I want, what I wanted to focus on. Yeah, that no, no, totally, totally makes sense. So, uh, Tom, uh, another Tom, here we go with Tom, but not from Chicago, uh, says, I liked the seventies, eighties, DC comics, read most of them would get for free or really cheap at yard sales. Okay. Now that's nice. If you have that ability, but Marvel was all I bought off the stands. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I, I see you post a lot of stuff, Tom, as the number one Marvel fan. And I sometimes think I want to be the number one DC fan. <laughs> uh, I don't know. If, I don't know if anybody took that you know, um, took that, you know, YouTube handle or not. But um, <laughs> for me, it, it's always been DC, you know, and I, 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 for a while I had, you know, my Cockerman, um, Burn X-Men and, you know, I read them and I know they're great, but it yeah. wasn't, it didn't tie back to those three comics that, you know, my, my right. mom and dad got me, which ultimately led to the Justice League right. and Green Lantern. And you just can't undo that, you know? Yeah, no, absolutely. And CJ agrees with you. And Larry likes Grummet too. Well, sure. I'm not the only one. <laughs> I, sh I would hope not. Um, yes. And two Wongs in the house. We know that, baby. Shaggy and Larry are here tonight. That's awesome. The DC Eater Man. Yes. Well, you should check out. You should You should maybe do a little quick search, uh, Tom, to see if maybe. Yeah, maybe I will. <laughs> taken. Um, awesome. Um, okay. So fantastic. Now. Um, if I, I, you gotta have to excuse me cause I'm, I'm very detail oriented. So I always like to know, I always like to try to place myself. Like where was I yeah. at the time that my guests are sort of telling their backstory, you know? Um, first of all, do you mind saying how old you are? I'm 57. 57. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, um, so when you got your first comic, then so okay so if it's so I'm fifty three. I was ten. You were okay exactly exactly. Yeah. Seventy six nine ten. Yeah. yeah. So exactly okay. And for how long did you read comics re regularly, or did you ever stop? I stopped probably after Death in the Family eighty nine. Oh. I went, yeah. When I when I graduated college, when I got my undergraduate degree. Um, it was really because I, I came out of school for a couple of years before I went back and got a, a, a master's degree. Nice. And it was just, yeah, but it was, you know, it was just too much going on, you know, and yeah. I just um, I remember picking up issues that are here and there. I remember picking up JLA Avengers in 2003, but that nothing else around that pe time period, um, a couple issues. So once your life got a little bit busy, you know. Um, so I collected from about the time that I was 10 uh, until the time I was uh, 21, 22, with maybe going in a comic shop once a, once every three or four months after that. Okay. And, um, okay, so, um, what, three or four months? Wow, not even three or four weeks. 
Yeah, it's hard to say. I'm, I'm trying to think what I got, you know, from, you know, I remember picking up Kingdom Come and that was 96, right? Okay. So, yeah. and then, and then you got the big kind of downturn when Marvel went bankrupt and yeah, that was that, you know, yeah, yeah, right. 90, 98 or something. And, and there just wasn't much. Um, what got me back into the comic shop was, you know, finally JLA Avengers, you know, and, and having George do that. It was like, that was exciting. It's like many of us in 1983, when that project crashed, yeah. we were all crushed, right? Yeah. Um, you know, and I remember going in the shop, there was no internet back in 1983 and you keep waiting for jail of adventures to come out and you, you keep looking at the stands and, you know, you hear news from comic conventions. So that was disappointing. That what got, that got me back in the shop in 2003. Okay, cool. Uh, interesting question by Marcus, um, because I, I was kind of wondering too, when you said, when you, when you were talking about when you kind of, uh, uh, you know, gave it up around the, you know, the end of college, he says, but Batman in the 89 movie didn't keep you excited? Oh, it did. Yeah. Oh. Uh, but I also sold a long box of Batman because it was a really hot time oh, of you wow. know, reading out. But, you know, remember, yeah. I was moving from, you know, mom and dad's house into a small apartment being out on my own. Yeah. I had to sell some comics, right? Um, yeah. But I still kept my Neil Adams Green Lanterns and my Neil Adams Batmans and you know, all my Dick Dillon Justice League from 64 up. And, you know, so I still had some of those. But, yeah, yeah. it was exciting. And, you know, I, I remember going to see, you know, I, like everybody, I remember thinking Michael Keaton, right? But, you know, um, Dark Knight Returns set a really good tone and Tim Burton followed it up. And, uh, yeah, I was excited about it, Marcus. It was. And yeah. um, so, you know, but there was also, you know, cars and girls and all kinds of yeah. other things that you had. You know, that took ah. attention, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Pink Floyd concerts. I remember, you know, gee, do I buy comic books or I go to see Pink Floyd in '96, right? Yeah. Like if you're if you're like in your early 20s, you just finished college, and you got if you've got chances and and you know you've got access to to females. If you're a guy, you get access to the to the ladies. Yeah, I can see how obviously you know. Okay, I think the the comics are going to take a back seat now, you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to put that Titans poster in the closet when she comes over, right? <laughs> Pretty much, I, yeah. I have to admit. Yeah, yeah, that is so funny. But that, <laughs> chicks dig the Batmobile. But unfortunately, yeah. unfortunately, Tom didn't have the Batmobile. They no. did. You have it, you know. Yeah, I had an '89 Suzuki Swift GTI. Oh, a, a motorcycle rider, are you? No, 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 no. That was a car. That was a car. Oh, because they used yeah. to make a Suzuki. They did, Swift yeah. Motorcycle. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, that was a that was a little that was a little oh, pocket rocket little, back. That was your little. Uh, okay. Was a little, yeah, that was a little. Yeah. Okay. That wasn't a chick. Was not a chick magnet. Not a chick magnet, right? Hey, Maki Poo Poo, what's up, sir? Good to see you, man. And uh, Pink Floyd every time said superhero. Do you oh, okay? Do you know who superhero is? Because it's the first time I've seen superhero. Superhero. Do we know each other? Let us know. We like to know who comes in to watch. Um, yeah. Let yeah. Us know. Rick. Rick says uh, momentary lapse of comics. That absolutely. Momentary yes. lapse of comics. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Superhero. Let us know if we know each other, man. Let us know who you are. Uh, Pink Floyd every time. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, I feel like it's a very common path collecting in youth, life pulls you away, and then having a job with money and something pulls you back in. Yeah, the, the yes. fact that you realize, oh, look how much money I'm earning now. I'm, I'm doing a lot better for myself in life. I can spend some of this stuff, and oh, let me see what else is there to buy out there. Let me let me see what's happening in comics again, you know? Well, what I did do, I do recall doing, is going back and saying, you know, my beat up Green Lantern, you know, 76, through 85 or whatever I'm, I'm when you had money you can go oh, i'm gonna i'm gonna buy some graded ones or i'm gonna buy some really nice good you know condition so i do remember turning over some of those older issues with some money yeah okay what's up jared it's jared what's up jared what and by the way jared of all of all names to have superhero and by the way i don't remember you being superhero when were you already superhero when you did those two episodes that we did together i don't know superhero it just doesn't seem like it's familiar okay i guess maybe it was i don't know you let me know lovely to have you my friend thank you for dropping by uh and thank you comic Art boston i appreciate you uh registering your like and uh, i'm sorry that you cannot stick around 
but is he's happy, Tom, that you know, he's hoping you're fully recovered. And he, uh, yes. Yeah. Now, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm recovered. Thank you. Exactly. There you go. But thanks for dropping in. Thank you. Um, okay. So sounds good. So now you, you get back in because the JLA Avengers. Um, and when that pulls you back in, does it keep you in? Yeah. I mean, you had the infinite crisis um that came out what was it 2005 yeah like, that's a few yeah. years after yeah you know and that that was kind of interesting until there was like final crisis and crisis to this and you know the night you know in the 2000 you had these big event you know um issues these series where you know i think after infinite crisis it just got a little too much and okay. um and then i i think i just wound up you know, hitting the big pause button. I never, I would never get rid of my comics. They mean too much to me. Okay. Um, and I, what I do remember is distinctly, I had a trip to Singapore and I flew out of New Jersey and I wound up taking a stack of comics with on the plane from when I was a kid, right? Oh, yeah. I'm just rereading them. And um, I think I got more joy out of rereading stuff I hadn't read in 20, 25 years than going to buy whatever the heck was, you know, um, multiverse is collapsing and coming back and collapsing and 52 this just got too. Right. Right. Yeah. I totally get that. Okay. And so how do we get from the, let's say, I don't know, mid to late two thousands feeling that way, um, to suddenly you in the late, uh, I guess what it's uh, it, at that point, it's still, about a decade away before you dipped your toes into original art, right? I had a no. That's not. I had a couple pieces. Okay. I I bought some. I had some original pieces that I started collecting. I'm gonna guess it was around 2004, 2005. I had a oh. Neil Adams Brave and Bold Teen Titans page. Oh I, wow! I, how, do you, yeah. how, do you, how do you gloss over? Skip that. Yeah. Thing? Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, you know, for a while they were just sitting in the closet, and then when I bought my first house. Um, I set up an office where I had, you know, five or six pages up with crack lighting and it was a Neil Adams, Brave and Bold. It was a JLA Avengers page that I bought in 2003. So yeah, I, I guess I should say that I, I collected a little art in 2003, 2007 until my daughter was born. Then I had to give up that office where the art was on the wall for the, my daughter's room. Mm. That's when I got rid of pieces and then kind of shelved some pieces. I kept the JLA Avengers page. I kept the Kurt Swan 463 page from the first comic I had. I sold uh, the Neil Adams Brave and Bold page, right? That was stupid. And then I sold a Jim Starlin cover to DC Comic Presents 26, which still haunts oh, me. Wow. Oh, that broke my heart when I realized that because I'd looked at that thing for 30 years and then it wasn't yeah. there and I really regretted it. Um, so I already had- wait, wait, wait a second. You looked at it for 30 years? I had that. Well, I had that, maybe it was 25. I bought it in 1982. And I the sold page? it. In, yeah, I bought the cover. DC Comics Presents 26. I think the that's the cover. Funny. Bought it for like 50 bucks, maybe at Joe again, again, Tom, I ask you, how do you gloss over details? Well, like well yeah, I, 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 sorry. I'm not used to telling my origin story. I, yeah. I, you know, I, I, have to wow. rec I have to retcon it a little bit. Um, so I did have a couple pages, pages that I bought as a kid. Um, it was uh, New Teen Titans. It was 42. It was the first Judas contract. Oh, wow. I had a page there that my mom actually threw out when I was oh. away at college. Yeah. Uh. But, but at um, uh, OAX, I made a deal with um, Michael Lovitz to buy another page from that issue. And that is going to be arriving soon. Oh, so good. that it, that's kind of a, a you know that was kind of my white whale getting a page from uh, New Teen Titans forty two, but the but the DC Comics presents twenty six cover which was it's the one with Supergirl on it I'm pretty sure it's twenty six that broke my heart because uh, I let that what, go what, for like twenty six that's the one that has the insert of the first appearance of the New Teen Titans isn't it may, no I think that was somebody else in the chat maybe no I think it was. The one with Supergirl, I think, was 26. I think oh, 20. No. Oh, yeah? Oh. 28. 28 was the one with Green Lantern Green and Lantern. the first Titans. Oh. Somebody looked that up. Marcus yeah, should somebody's know. Somebody's going to tell us in a second. Yeah, yeah. But I had the one with Supergirl on it. 
and um okay the super girl yeah okay. yeah and i let that go for five or six grand i tried to get it back couldn't work the deal out and um now somebody has it and uh i believe they're here locally and i don't blame oh. them for not i don't blame them for not getting rid of it um okay. i wouldn't but yeah. uh so 26, yeah. 26 is the first titans one okay then what, what was the super girl man it was 28 then it was 20 now the supergirl one so who 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 did the cover to that one well it was, it was starling it was mongol is and he's oh the mongol yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. That is mongol. Yeah. yeah yes thank you yeah yeah, yeah. 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 wow yeah. that's so cool and so you you bought that one as a kid at a, at a con back in the day uh i bought it from a comic shop joe oh, Sono's wow. comic kingdom yeah and wow. i still have pictures and you know as a kid with that thing in the background and um that that yeah i i could die a happy man if i could ever get that that page you know that cover back um that was a heartbreaker that's that's the one that you know you always had the one girl that crushes you you always had the one comic art piece that yeah. Crushes you. yeah 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 so that that was that, 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 that was uh so 28 you, yes Derek 28, tells me 28, 28. Yeah. thank you Derek. 28 yeah that Thanks, was the Derek. One. what's up Derek? i try to block it out and Marcus and Gabe, everybody, thank you, thank you all. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, thanks for looking that up. Wow, but you 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 just said you got six k for it. That means you, you sold it in the recent. Oh, I did. Yeah, I mean, I paid a hundred bucks for it, and I sold it for six k in two thousand seven, eight, when my daughter was born. Again, Whoa. you know, okay, that's yeah, I'll cover her medical bills and all the hospital stuff or whatever. Oh, really? you know, I, wow. Yeah, but you know. You do hey listen you do you did what you had to do that you, you can't get to do you can't you feel bad about that that's for your that's yeah. for your yeah. that's for your girl you know yeah yeah man that's like yeah family is worth more than any comic art so but i will tell you getting into the hobby and meeting the folks a lot of folks in the chat who i met at oax you know what i learned was everybody goes through that right. you know it's uh you know everybody has that at one piece or two yeah. pieces or multiple pieces um so uh, you know Getting in the community, there's this kind of where you feel like, oh, I realized how much that piece is worth now. But then you realize, eh, everybody else has gone through that. So. Right. Right. Well, like like Comic Art Boston says, Tom, yeah, never say true. never. You know, Maybe. That's true. Maybe. You just never know, you know? Yeah. Um, and like he says, that was much more important than impossible to value in material terms, right? Which you had to do it for your daughter. And that's, that's, you that's know, ultimately, yeah. That's what family I'm always right. comes first, whatever. Yeah. Our yeah. 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 Boston, you're right. Yeah. You know, um, some pages from Perez's first unpublished JLA Avengers floating around. Yeah, sure. Yeah. They're on the cast, too. Been, yeah. We know who has them. And uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, those, those, those were beautiful. Um, yeah. I think, I think you can actually, I think for a while, Phil is inked and colored them or some i think filament has inked them and somebody else colored them they were out on twitter or something for a while oh um, those those are really nice pages yeah yeah mickey says that he's got a page from from what issue uh what issue mickey by the way good evening lovely to I see think, you mickey do you have the one where it's the missiles um it looks like it's a castle then you realize they're giant missiles yeah let us know um yeah still part of your journey and it went to a priceless cause says carl it did carl yeah it did and it's not it the did. dollar worth it's the sentimental worth to me yeah of course and i do have a recreation of that um that uh some artists did for me on cap and i have that in my portfolio it took a while for me to be able to look at that but now i can yeah yeah like you said tom you know at some point or another you know Pretty much every collector sort of goes through that kind of stuff, you know. So uh, that was right of pass. Hey, Mr. Red Jack, you're back. Uh, for every comic art collector, yeah. Yeah. Um, but okay, so um, and he's agreeing with Brian. Yeah, if it's not selling, it's not buying. Um so so okay, I meant, I just want I need to sorry, I need to know. So <laughs> the pieces that you purchased, if we can go in order, I'd like to know all the pieces that you did pick up um in your youth before you were an actual comic art collector so you got the you got the starling cover you got the, the starling Nick cover right yeah and those are the only two i paid pages i had for a long time oh okay uh, oh for maybe yeah. you know and until i went away to college and my mom threw out the titans page and i think right, the right. let me ask you something mm -hmm. about your mom throwing out the, the I, Titans page i gotta yeah. ask you because you said you still got your comics how is it that 
she came to throw out that one page but she didn't do the classic i'm throwing out your comics tom yeah yeah um i shouldn't say my mom it was one it was one of my parents and it wasn't done out of ignorance i had a hallway and i've got pictures of them some somewhere i had all my comics in a hallway and i was really close with the owner of of the comic kingdom in chicago so i used to get the posters all the comic posters that would come out to promote each issue um i had them all and um i had a beautiful hallway and i had uh Battlestar galactica vipers and cylon raiders hanging from the hallway it was awesome um and when i went away to college my mom and dad decided to sell the house and um somehow my posters um were accidentally thrown out oh. and what happened was and i have a picture that page the titans page 42 i don't know what page it is maybe 16 or 18. um you can see it in one of the pictures in the corner and what happened was she, it was it got wrapped up with the posters because i had it hanging on the wall with my other oh. posters so oh. yeah um oh. yeah and you know for years i'd go into their basement and open up old newspaper things that i had as a kid hoping i would just find it you yeah. know just just hoping it would find it but like i said the great thing about going to oax and meeting everybody in the community um michael lovitz has got a page from that issue and and i've, I've been slowly paying it off i'm going to get that soon that's and cool. um that wouldn't have been a case if i wasn't you know part of the cath community yeah absolutely good on you uh mr lovitz appreciate that helping out uh tom that's awesome yeah. um yeah so that's great um, thank you, Mickey. Appreciate it. So Mickey was saying the page he has is uh, page 13 from the issue DC Presents 28, a panel. Yeah, I, I've been looking at those pages. I'll, I'll check it out, Mickey. I, I, I think I've seen that page. Um, but yeah, that was, uh, that was I think that was Breakdowns and Layouts by Starlin. And I think Tangal did the, the inks on that. I forget. Um, and then there was one issue um, where I think it, was, it came back, was, it might have been 36, where Starlin actually did his own inks to wrap yeah. up that that starman mongol story okay. and those are the pages that are really nice when you get the starlin because he didn't do a lot of his own inks on interior pages no that's true um, very rare yeah. yeah yeah very rare very cool okay all right so um let's fast forward then let's let's we've done the retroactive uh, talking about the art that's cool really cool stories actually um to hear that you had those two pieces at such a young age you know before being able to truly appreciate what you had. No and, idea. And yeah. I remember I can go I remember going into that comic shop and Joe, every convention, he'd buy some art and put it up on the wall for sale. And geez, man, I mean, if I would have only only known, right? Yeah, sure. Sure. Yeah. But you know, that's we all way. say that, right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. You can't really say that, you know. Yeah. But uh cool. Look, it's cool that you you did have two pages at, at a young age without really knowing what you had, you know. No idea. Or you probably just figured, oh, it's a nice little memento. It's a nice, nice memento to have from a comic book or yeah. whatever. Just kind of, yeah. you know, whatever. At that time, we all thought comics are everything. It's our <laughs> comics that mean everything to us. you right. Because it wasn't yeah. an, an original art. wasn't an established market. Yeah, I, I've heard, I've heard yeah. stories of guys my age buying art at comic shows and taking them home so their brothers and sisters could color them. Oh, you know? yeah. <laughs> you know, so. Yeah, I don't even yeah. want to think of that, but yeah, I know yeah. absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, so good. So let's fast forward again then, and uh, tell us a little bit um, about how you finally made that first step to buying your first, te technically your first piece um, as a brand new collector, knowing what you're buying, knowing that you're going to collect this stuff. You know? Yeah, I don't mean to confuse you, but I, I kind of had three arcs. So I had those first two pages, you know, in the early 80s. Right. Um, and then I think when I finally got a good paying job and we bought a house, I was making some money. I bought the Neil, Neil Adams Brave and Bold page. I bought the JLA Avengers page, which I think I paid 900 bucks for off of eBay. Well, yeah. Sorry, when, when did the Brave and Bold page come in? It was probably, I bought it in 2000. Three two thousand four oh, okay. off the of, off of eBay. Um, yeah. I bought the uh, JLA Avengers page from a guy that was local to Chicago. I remember I found it on eBay, but I went to uh, pick it up locally. Um, what else did I have? Uh, maybe one other page. I think I had a 
Justice League Adventures page, you know, kind of the, the kid comics from the cartoon, and I got a cover. So it wasn't a lot. Yeah. And then I finally got a oh the Kurt Swan page from 463, which was the first comic. And I had those pages, you know, maybe until my daughter was born, five or six years. Um, I sold a couple when she was born. Like I said, I kept the 463. I kept the JLA Avengers page, but I didn't hang them anywhere. They were sitting in the closet. Um, so that was arc two. And then, uh, you know, later on, um, life changed a lot. Um, and uh, I wound up um, really trying to, you know, go back and find things that excited me as a kid. You know, when I was, this was 2019. Um, and I, that's when I went up and said, hell, I'm going to go meet George. Right. Okay. And I flew up to the Niagara Falls. Um, and um, I, I would just meeting him was a blast. Um, he was as nice that I had been hearing about for years. Uh, I bought a couple oh, and I bought a couple really cheap Perez pages for him to sign something oh. a, a cross gen page okay. that he did. And I think a. Uh, it was a Titans page, but no Titans were on it. It was like a Brother Blood page, just so I'd have some from the sign. It's something to um, get signed, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and and that really kicked it off. So if you look at my calf gallery, I joined in, in late 2019, okay. and every page I have on there has been, you know, since 2019. Yeah, very cool. Look at what uh, Michael, uh, a.k.a. Maki Pupu, says. My daughter, Mika, kept asking me a few years ago if she could color some of my original art. Yeah. Exactly. You got to be careful because, of course, they, a kid will look at that and think, of course, it's like a coloring book, right? So why yeah, not? Yeah, yeah. Well, go, go to the FedEx print stores and, and make, you know, large scans and have them printed out right there and let her color yeah. those. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, okay, well, that's pretty cool because you, you when you decided to go to that con in uh, 2019, it was, I'm assuming, strictly to meet George. Yes. It wasn't Right. It wasn't like you had anything in mind of like, maybe when I'm there, I'll try to find some original art there for him to sign. It was just while you were there, let me, what can I get to sign? And let me look around and you, oh, let me look at this original. Oh, look, I'll get these two pages, whatever. Yeah, why not? I, in fact, you asked about when I collect, what comics I collected later in life. Yeah. I had all, I think there were eight issues of Solace from CrossGen. Which Solace from CrossGen, yeah. But he only penciled seven of them. Mm -hmm. And he didn't do the last one. And I had all seven. Never read them. Right. But if I went in the comic store and it was George, I picked it up. Right. Right. Um, I had the brave, and I had the brave and bolds that he did. Right. So I, you know, uh, those were two thousand five, maybe. So I'd go back for George stuff. You know. Okay. Um, but always a huge fan of Garcia Lopez as well. Um, you know, and I, I would, I would look for things like sure. that. Well, you know. I, I, I'm sorry, I don't want to get too far off track, but at OAX, I got an opportunity to sit with Jose um, at a bar, um, cool. you know, at the hotel for 30 minutes. And really? I thought this was awesome because I never had that chance with George, right? Yeah. But I, I got 30 minutes sitting with the bar at, with Jose and just talking about Dead Man and some of the weird war tales stuff that he did. And um, just that was worth a trip alone right there. Right. And I, just to meet him because I didn't get a chance to meet George. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh, Garcia Lopez, yeah, uh, one of the yeah. most phenomenal draftsmen of all time. So, yeah, and unfortunately, only started getting recognized for it in the last twenty years or so. And although that's sad, but on the other hand, I'm happy to say that I feel a lot of the recognition that finally did come in the last two decades came through as a result of a lot of us who were fans within the yeah. comic art market constantly kind of you know putting it out there that oh my god like nobody pays attention to this guy like he's one of the best ever but nobody ever pays attention and you know he's never listed as one of the you know right. best artists of all time but and then people finally started to you know, look in and say, well, what, why do keep, people keep mentioning Jose Luis Garcia? Yeah. And finally, let me, let me look, let me look. And they keep hearing it's so dynamic. It's so dynamic. And finally you started realizing if you took a look, wow, the figure work really is dynamic. And Oh just, yeah. His dad, well, that dead man page you have is, is, is awesome. Oh. This, the dead man page, any of the pages he inked. And I think what also helped get him some recognition was the fact that as many artists were getting online and you saw the, uh, uh, the prevalence of social media and the internet, the artists themselves who went online were talking about what a great artist he was. 
right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, and well, I think that's, that, the thing. that's the thing, yeah. Tom, is that yeah. what I'm saying, when I say he only really started getting a lot of a lot more recognition in the last 20 years, I'm referring from fans. Yeah. But a lot of artists always yeah. recognized him and being fantastic, you know? He was yeah. that's why when you hear the terminology, the the uh the saying, he's an artist's artist. Yeah, that's that's what they mean, right? It's 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 the type of guy who's just excellent, but the average fan does not recognize it. Um, but the other artists do, you know. Yeah, um, he had a piece yeah. in the auction at OEX, and I thought it was going to go for maybe two or three, and it wound up going for I want to say six, six and a half. And there was a guy there with a Superman T-shirt with Jose on it. And he was not going to be outbid on that page. I, I was actually shooting some video and I threw up a bid. Um, uh, Josh Kassara, the artist, he was throwing up a bid uh, yeah. as well. But this guy was not going to be denied. And I love that passion, you know. And yeah. and he got a lot of recognition about uh, out of that. You know, he was there for that, I think. You know, he was there at the auction. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, very cool. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so um, that all sounds good. And and lastly, just want to know, um, ever since you did in and you started buying in 2019, um, have you been buying mostly online? Is that a fair set? Uh, uh, no? Yeah, all over the place. Oh, um, okay. Fellow collectors, a couple pieces, you know, okay. um, you know, 80% of the time you ask somebody on, online through CAP, they're going to, you know, sell a page. They're going to say no. But every once in a while, you find somebody do. I think I got one or two of those. Uh, I've nice. got a real, got, you know, um, Nick Barucci has sold me a page that uh, I didn't think he was going to part with. But when I explained to him um, what it meant to me, it was, you know, in, in the, the kind of, you know, the continuity it had in my life and what I was going through. It was a Dick Dillon um, and then a George Perez page. Uh, I wanted a, I had Dick Dillon's last page on Justice League, and I wanted a page from George's first. So he had 183 when Dillon passed, and I wanted a page from 184 to go right next to it. Yeah, it's right over my shoulder over here. The two of them together, and I yeah, I, I reached out to Nick, and he you know, he, it, it, I paid a good price for it, but he was able oh, sure. to, to to give it up. You know, sure, and, you got um, to, you got to. Yeah. But the the key is that the, the person wasn't looking to sell it. And they still agreed to. So that's what you got to look at it, you know? Like, yeah. You know, and that's the importance, right? yeah, of building yeah. relationships in the community. Um, you know, there's folks in the chat who I met at OAX. Um, you know, Marcus helped me with some early collector questions um, early on when I joined. Uh, and uh, so buying from other collectors, I did buy some stuff at auction. I've got a Green Lantern um, page from 1968. That's my oldest page that I picked up on Heritage, a Gil Kane. Green Lantern Love page, with, yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll be seeing yeah, that. One, oh, really? Did you pick? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and and the actual, um, the actual. Well, we'll get, we'll save, we'll talk about that page yeah. when it comes up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, um, so but yeah, but I get it. You know, um, auctions, fellow collectors, eBay sometimes. You okay, know, but eBay, there's yeah. a lot of junk on eBay. It's hard to get through it all. Well, that's true. Well, we've talked about yeah. that a lot here. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. I know you guys have. Yeah. Yeah, it's the same old story, but uh, same old song and dance, you know. But um, but yeah, it's it's um, it's one of those things I think that most people that get into the hobby, and you know, when you're new, your first few years, yeah, you you're looking anywhere you can find what you like, right? So you you do tend to to end up buying from all avenues, you know, whether it's eBay, a, a local convention, a online dealer, auction, you know, yeah. everywhere. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and that one of the mistakes I found out early on, there was a, we're talking about Jose, and um, he did that series Twilight that Howard Chaikin wrote. Yes, and he won an award for his art on that series. Right, I couldn't understand. I remember trying to read it, and it was typical Howard. You really got to pay attention, but the art was gorgeous, and I got a double page spread from that, and I got it, and I put it up on the wall. I framed it in a big frame, and you know what? It's not the Jose I wanted. It wasn't Dead Man. It, right. it, it wasn't um, uh, Superman, and I sold it. And I, I learned that even if it was an artist you love, I didn't have any connection to that story, I, right? Yeah, I get it. And yeah. I, I wound up selling it, yeah. Yeah, but that's okay. It, it's, it gives you something to kind of maybe shoot for down the road, you know? You, you, you keep your eyes open, you keep your eyes peeled, you never know. Um, 
I, I, you know, I've told people before, um, the dead man page I have, it's my only one. But at one point I had one quarter of the mini series. Yeah. So I got rid of them all. And ultimately it was just like, you know what? I'm just happy with having one great example. This is the one I want. And I, I sold the others, you know, so yeah. They're out there. You'll you'll eventually find one if you really want. I one. will. That's that's sort yeah. of next on my list, to be honest. Yes, yeah. that's, that's that's next on my list. Good. There you go. All right, man. So you ready to get into the show and tell? And let's. Yeah. Uh, all right. All right, man. Um, let me see. Thanks. Anything else? I got to see in the chat. Uh, nope. We're all caught up. Excellent. Okay, everybody. Let us get into the show and tell. And see uh, what uh, Tom has to uh, tell us. So what little tales he might tell us about the uh, art that he has been adding to his collection over the last few years. We will start um, here with the first piece tonight. I wanted the first piece to start off um, with Green Lantern because you're a Green Lantern fan. There you go. Look at that, everybody. So I thought it was appropriate. I figured since that's already appropriate, I'd make it even more appropriate. And I thought we'd start by showing the image that I used for yeah. tonight's thumbnail uh, by Eric Mador. So let's check that out. Why don't we? And you can tell us a little bit about this. Um, what a fantastic artist. Um, I, I don't know much about him, although I communicated with him a little bit um, when um, after I, I bought the piece. Um, and for the longest time, that piece was over my shoulder on all my Zoom calls, but I've replaced it with that Watchman Rorschach, which I understand we're going to be talking about too. Uh, but for the longest time, that piece was there. And Hell Jordan is to me Green Lantern. Right. He's always going to be Green Lantern. Um, and this piece just says, God damn it, I'm Green Lantern. And I just had to have it. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, and I, I, you know, Eric is a big guy. I've seen. I've seen his pictures. He's a, he looks like he might be a bodybuilder. Oh. And all of his art is, is you know, these big guys. You know, he does a magnificent Thor. Um, and um, I had no idea who this guy was. Mike Berkey had this. And I actually, uh, I did a package deal with Mike, this and another page, which I've, I've since sold. Um, but I had to have this. I just, I, I saw yeah. it and I just had to have it. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. I, I yes, it was like five hundred bucks. Yeah, and it's like it's like you know, ink wash or you know, I don't know all my technical terms. Yeah, yeah. But it it's a stunner, and it's big too. It's it's like eighteen by twenty, I think. It's oh, is it really? Wow. Yeah, and that Matt. So Maki Pupu, you, you mentioned the the frame. Um, I for the longest time when I first framed everything, I had all my mats like match different green tones for the Green Lantern. Superman was blue and yellow with, you know, blue, blue mat with a yellow, you know, uh, secondary mat. I change art so much now it's kind of hard to keep track, but I, I specifically picked that mat for that art. Yeah, yeah. The color mat. Uh, what's up, Mike? Eric does a lot of commissions through CAF or used to. Yeah, that's it. He's not like a published, you know, he's not like a, a monthly, you know, a yeah. comics guy. I, I've only ever known him as a guy who does like pinups, stuff like this, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this one when I saw this uh, in your in your gallery, I was just oh, okay. I love Green Lantern too. So I was like, yeah, this is gorgeous. Like, yeah. you know, yeah. So I, I definitely wanted to show this, you know. And yeah, that's that's that that that'll be with me forever. Oh, that's fantastic! No, really, really beautiful. So very happy to to make this the first piece of the of the evening. Yeah, huh? that's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah, I, I think it's a good good way to start the, sh the the show, you know. Yeah. Okay, so from there, let us go to the next piece, everyone. The second piece in tonight's show, and that is. Yeah. Well, the one we talked yeah. about. The one we talked yeah. about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you know, when you hear uh, Bill Cox talk about why he didn't like the DC universe, these types of stories are it, <laughs> yeah. you know, but these are the stories I grew up on. It's a goofy story. Um, and you know, everything in 1976 had to be bicentennial. Um, and it's this goofy story about this cab rack, this, this alien who, 
you know, comes from a world where everybody has superpowers and he's dying and he fights Superman and he hits Superman so hard, you know, in July, of the, I think it's July, it was published July of 76. He gets right. punched so hard, he goes back into time and he becomes, you know, <laughs> goes to the founding fathers, right? You yeah. Know, um, this, this, is, this is why Marvel shot ahead these stories, right? Oh, yeah. Um, but, but, you know, this was my first comic. Um, I read the crap out of this comic. Uh, because I had three comics driving from Chicago to Knoxville, Tennessee, and I read this comic and the two other in the bag 20 times, probably back and forth. Um, so when I found a page from this, I was thrilled. Um, and, you know, you could see Kurt Swan signed it on the uh, fourth panel there. Um, and, you know, yep. say what you want about Kurt Swan, but, um, man, he, he just evolved so well over time. You know the, the the quintessential Superman artist, and we talked about Jose. Um, you know, Jose was sort of in line to replace uh, Kurt Swan, and that's what they had him lined up for. And then Crisis happened, and John Byrne comes in to take over Superman. I always wondered if you know things had been a little different. You know how the transition from Kurt, Kurt Swan would have established to Jose, but but Kurt Swan really got better too. Um, after like. Um, Carmine Infantino left as as um, head of DC, and Julie Schwartz came in. Even though he had been drawing um, Superman since the fifties, um, his panels got more explosive. He did more things with action. He broke panels a lot more. You don't see it here, uh, right. but, but but Kurt Swan was just a master um, and and reliable as well. Um, no, absolutely. You know, I mean, I think he drew, he, I think he, he drew the character for like 30 years nonstop. You yeah, know? yeah. Yeah. And, you know, he, he really, you know, towards the, the those last 10 years, he really did some some really cool stuff. You have to go back and see Superman in action or flying or being punched. And he, he really grew as an artist um, through his 70s. He really did. Yeah, absolutely. And I wanted to, uh, lest, you, lest you think that I skipped over you, Comic Art Boston, I wanted to highlight a particular comment that he had made. Yeah, I'm looking uh, at the comments. When you mentioned, when you, I'm going to pop it up here on the screen, anyways. But uh, that we were talking about, you know, the goopy stories, but goopy yeah. is often nice as well. Nostalgia rules, and it, it, it's it's true because he, here's the thing: is I'm also one of those who um, was a Marvel guy as a kid more than anything, and that is the reason is because the stories were taken seriously. Whereas whenever I'd read an, a random issue of a DC comic, most of the time, especially Superman, it was always some ridiculous, silly nonsense going on. And I just yeah, felt like a lot of that. Yeah. yeah, even as a kid, I felt like this is yeah. for way younger kids than me. Yeah. Like, this is so stupid. Like, I don't get it, right? Um, and that's why Marvel ate their lunch for so many years. Um, but what, what, what Comic Art Boston says is also interesting because all these years later now, being a lot older and now I'm in my in, in my 50s myself, I kind of like looking at the original yeah. pages that are from these goofy tales. I, I I don't know why, you know. I'm not saying I would want to read the stories. Exactly, yeah. But I, it's kind of fun. I don't know. There's just something, I guess yeah. the innocence of it all or something, you know. There's something about that. Mark Fong has a comment I'm reading here <clears throat> where he said, you know, with all due respect to Kurt Swan, yes. he didn't care for or Kurt Swan, he didn't right. pay attention to Jose took over. I get it because I remember buying issues of DC Comics Presents and there was Kurt Swan would pencil an issue and then Ho Jose would pick, and you pick it up and you think, oh, I want it to be Jose and it's Kurt Swan. And I remember being like, uh, but I still read it, right? right? And over time, there are artists that you may not like as a kid, but I think as a collector, you you realize to appreciate them a lot more. Right. Same thing for, for me. It was Jim Aparo, right? Jim Aparo seemed to be everywhere, right? He was. I know he's the consummate Batman artist, but there was a while and Jim Aparo didn't do anything for me. I just posted an Aparo page today. I was thrilled to get right yeah. because I started to have more appreciation for Aparo as I got into the hobby. The man, you know penciled, inked, and lettered his own stuff. And if you if you really look at how he constructed pages, having that ability, it was fantastic. So you you your art your your a change of your your appreciation for artists changes as you be, I think be, you move from yeah. being a comic collector to an art collector. 
Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Carl has a good uh, comment. You know, he's saying that, that the innocent, what I was saying, basically echoing what I was saying, the innocent energy that it gives off is undeniable. And he agrees. It's just yeah. fun and enjoyable to look at, you know? Yeah. And that's the thing. As I've gotten older, I've said it a, a lot of times. Um, I'm just kind of in it to have fun. I want to enjoy myself in the hobby. And oftentimes that comes through in the artwork, looking at artwork that gives off a sense of fun, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Rick mentions that Neil Adams did a lot of great Superman covers. and. Neil Adams, of course, did that great cover oh. where Superman is breaking the the kryptonite chains. Yeah, two thirty three. Um, yeah, Maybe yeah, that's... and but Kurt Swan, if I'm not mistaken, did the art for that, right? And that no, was, that was a... Miles oh yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I used to yeah. have a page. Uh, yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, Comic Art Boston says that it's uh, sometimes it's not goofy but too serious and poignant. For example, when Superboy tried to save President Lincoln, a lesson you cannot change the past. Yeah, it was fun when they would have those kinds of lessons. Yeah, you know. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, and they brought good in point. some kind of historical context or whatever. You know, that was that, that could be fun as well. Uh, Maki Pupu says, I didn't understand Qbert back in the day, but I see it differently today. Well, that's yeah, it. You, that's another example. you pick up knowledge yeah. over time, you know, the more time you spend in the hobby and you learn more. Yeah. And then you, you start to appreciate a lot of artists who you never used to in the past, you know. I couldn't uh, watch. I couldn't read a Jack Kirby book. But now at this point, my my you know collecting career I, i'd love to have a kirby page right but i yeah. couldn't i couldn't i couldn't look at you especially the the dc stuff he did like the superpower stuff i couldn't get my head around it yeah yeah exactly and cj i agree with you um although i'm still in the camp who i i don't like frank robbins superhero stuff i saw so his invader stuff i still hate it to this day but um his his newspaper strip stuff is beautiful so that's just how I feel about it. Um, Mr. Red Jack says that Marvel was more based on things happening in the real world. Exactly. Less fan fantastic, you know, drugs, crime, etc. cetera. Uh, DC allowed you to be a dreamer and have fun uh, un until Neil Adams and his Green Lantern, uh, Green Arrow, Green Lantern run. And then that became sort of started putting more serious real world stuff into it, you know. Um, yeah. But still the silly, even though they started with that, uh, Brian, they still continue the silliness for the most part, even after that. Well, well after that. You, you, the thing, the thing about Superman, you know, that made me sad most of my life is that, like, you know, as a kid, I loved the movie, you know, I loved the character, and yet I love the, you know, I love the Super Friends, but the, like, but then when I go to the comics, I always felt like, you know, pre-crisis, everything pre-crisis, they just. They just wouldn't ever come up with any good rogues for him. Like everybody they had ever created for him to fight him was way, way inferior to him in every respect. He didn't seem, it was never a challenge. So it always seemed silly to be like, you know, whatever villain of the month they would put in action or Superman. I always felt like a big deal. Like, I don't want to read this. I know he's going to win no matter what. Like they, they don't pose challenges other than Luthor with his brain, right? You know, outsmarting him, that kind of stuff. I always felt like the, the rogues gallery, that was the, the big killer for Superman, um, was that they just never made a great rogues gallery for him. At least that's my opinion. What do you think? Well, I think some of the good Superman stuff from the 70s wasn't in Superman. I think Steve Englehart's work on the Justice League. Okay. Uh, when the, he, when he, Justice yeah. League. I think within the Justice League, there was some some good Superman depictions. I think Steve Englehart um, in his run did a really good job. I mean, he was basically brought in to save the Justice League, um, which was tanking. Um, and he had just left Marvel. He was working on the Avengers and he made some really distinct personalities out of those characters. And I think some of the best Superman stuff was Steve Englehart, a little bit when Denny O'Neill was working on, on um, Justice League before him. And then Jerry Conway did some good characterization of superman in the 70s mm -hmm. i agree um mark or, or anybody else feel free to to, to let us all know uh, did I, idw have they not done a single volume of uh artist edition that focuses on garcia lopez i would have thought they would have done one someone did yeah because I, I saw it at oax yeah um there's been a I don't know if it's IDW or not, but there is a, it might've been, uh, Tomorrow's Publishing might've done one, I believe. Oh, okay, interesting. Um, yeah. 
No, it'd be nice to get. But uh, life is complex, and Marvel and DC complemented each other as a form of entertainment. True. Uh, yeah, that's a good good comment. Uh, with Superman, you knew he wasn't going to lose. Spider-Man got beaten down by the real world every issue. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's it. That's kind of why more people were affected by Spider-Man, not Superman, you know? Yeah. Well, um, there was an effort to depower Superman. In fact, if you go back to that yes. 233, the Neil Adams issue. We that were was the whole about, reason for that. That was the whole thing. They, they, he was somewhat depowered um, to make him more relatable. Yeah. Exactly. See, but the, the thing about that, Tom, is that what I believe is that even by then, the early 70s, it was a case of too little, too late. Because it by was. the early 70s, anybody who's looking at and reading comics, they already know that Superman is this super powerful being. So retconning doesn't really work the way that publishers hope it will. Because the, the general population already knows who the character is, and they've been that way for decades. So that's, in their minds, who they will always be. Like, it, yeah. it's, it's hard to change the perception and just, oh, just because you tell me in this brand new comic that he's no longer powerful like he used to be for 30 or 40 previous years, and now he's weaker. I don't see it that way. I'm still going to I'm still gonna think well, Superman is way too powerful. You know what I mean? Yeah, but that, you know, part of that problem was you had a lot of people leaving DC for Marvel, <clears throat> um, you know, starting with Gil Kane leaving for Marvel. And there was a flood of talent that just left DC. And that's ultimately why they brought Jeanette Kahn in. Um, and she did a very good job of, of navigating around some of those issues. Um, she brought in Inglehart. She brought in um, Conway for a while. And it took a while. But the Superman... Um, you know, Superman was stuck in a rut. Everybody was afraid to to mess with that IP too much. Um, but the Superman movies that followed, you know, Superman two kind of stunk. Um, yeah. And and really, it took them, you know, for to John Byrne and after Crisis to really take a chance with that character, right. who they ultimately killed off. You know, so right. he's a complicated character. You know, there's no doubt about it. It's it's a hard character to write. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to say, Rick. Yes, that's true that Muhammad Ali gave him a run for his money, but remember, it's only because Superman won kryptonite power. over his head, right? Yeah. In, the, in the ring, there was kryptonite. Yeah. yeah, so literally the only power he had in that fight was that of his actual musculature, you know what I mean, um, as, as kind of like a, a, a human being of that size would have, you know, so that's why. Yeah, um, and we had that gathering in Chicago. Um, a couple of weeks ago, three weeks ago, yes, and uh, a guy had a couple, uh, a collector had a couple pages from that issue, and there's a picture of me out on Facebook or something holding up a picture from that Muhammad Ali issue. That was pretty cool to see. I saw it, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. All right, all right. Let us uh, get on and continue. Resume the show and tell everybody. Thank you for allowing us to, to chat so much about this. Um, okay. So from Swan, we go away from Marvel DC that we've been talking about, and we do a character who is, well, why don't we just take a look and let Tom tell us about this. Oh, wow. So yeah, Cully Hamner. Um, I'm never going to be able to afford an American flag cover, but this is, this is as close as I'm going to get. So I picked this up. This was printed in the Baltimore... Uh, Comic-Con yearbook uh, last year. Um, um, and it was a kind of a tribute to uh, First Comics. Now, First Comic was based in the Chicago area. Um, and I actually did an interview with Rick Obadiah for a community television uh, show. I had him on set for like, I don't know, half hour. We had this set all decorated with uh, um, uh, big giant blow up covers of First Comics. There was Dread Star. And there was, of course, uh, American Flag. I mean, American Flag is the uh, the comic that I that made everybody grow up, right? Um, uh, the lettering, that the art, the storytelling um, was was just dynamic, and um, for sure. Uh, and you know, Howard Chaykin's writing is is you know a punch in the face. And uh, I remember picking up that first issue just for the cover alone. 
And I still have that same issue. In fact, Howard signed it for me last year, the one that I picked up back in 1983, I think. Oh, very cool. Yeah. And um, so this page, not only did um, uh, Colley Hamner, who did the, you know, the tribute, uh, to, you know, as part of the yearbook, but Howard yeah. signed it as well. And I have a picture with both Colley and um, with Howard. Um, and, uh, you know, um, Howard is, um, I have this video clip of him telling his pitch to take over Superman as opposed to John Byrne in 86. And I can't repeat it here, okay. um, <laughs> but the man, the, the man is hilarious. So I had a big thing for, for American flag. It was, it was here in Chicago was, although be it the future it was, uh, took place in Chicago. Um, the Plex Rangers. Um, I just have nothing but great, great memories. So uh, yeah. when I had a chance to buy this, the bidding started at twenty five bucks, and and I did the second bid at I think four hundred, and nobody outbid me, and I just took it. Oh, nice! That's yeah, cool. I, just, I, did, I didn't want to mess around. I really wanted to. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's really really cool. Excellent. Yeah. Um, I I it's it. I liked it because. I'm so used to seeing Chaikin American flag art, yeah. right? It, it's one of those properties that it's it's so um, it's so connected to its creator that you you just rarely see other people draw the, the, those yeah. characters, you know. So when you do see somebody else draw it, it just it's, it makes it really interesting, you know. Yeah, and yeah. And, and this was actually a yeah, this was actually a good case. Um, there are plate time. I think somebody did try to do. Uh, somebody in their channel now, but Howard left the book and it continued on some issues. Another artist took it over. Um, and it was a period of Dreadstar where Dread Jim Starlin left Dreadstar and another artist took over and it was just not right, right? It's just I, not I, right. I, I kept buying it. I don't remember who the first guy who took over. Actually, yeah, I don't remember who the first guy was that took over. It was, I remember buying it when Angel Bosberg, yeah, Mike Rick was right. It's Mike Bosberg who took over. And Bosberg was very close. He did oh, a no. nice oh, job. Oh, 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 but I thought you said Dreadstar, though. No, uh, there was two. There was a Dreadstar artist who took uh, took over Starlin. I don't remember who that was. Oh, okay, was yeah, you're talking Chaken. about, about yeah. Chaken. Yeah, yeah, Chaken and Vaz. But Vaz, the thing about Vaz is Vaz, I don't know if, if it was Chaken who asked him to. Or if he did it of his own volition, but if you remember carefully, clearly, Vaz was keeping with the same Chaikin yeah. style, right? To keep yeah, a that, continuity to it, yeah. Which I guess is good for readers, but at the same time, I kind of remember thinking, well, I don't know if I like it or not, like because it, it was like different. You're, yeah, you're, you're, but, you're, you're still imitating though, right? So it makes me feel like you're not gonna, you're never gonna do it as well as the the, the original guy. So maybe just do your own thing would be better, but I don't know, whatever. But it was, it yeah. was interesting. Well, you yeah. know, Rick has a point. It was still written by Howard. Oh um, no. Yeah. I know. I yeah. Know. Yeah. Yeah. I know. That, that helped a lot. That helped a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Lee says, I heard multiple times that Jerry Ordway would suggest killing Superman at every annual editorial <laughs> meeting. Um, for a while he might've been doing that. Yeah. Uh, the letterer kept the style seamless. That is true. Yeah. Was it and that, or no, was it Ken Brusenak? Uh, I think it was so Ken Rudin who did my trade uh, paperback. Yeah, but but that lettering, and, and I'm, I'm not pioneering this thought. It's been out there for a while. But if you look at what Howard was doing with American Flag, and then you look at Dark Knight Returns, a lot of parallels in the way the pages were constructed and the lettering. Right. Yeah, yeah, that would that, that that wouldn't be a stretch to think that hey, you know, Miller could have been looking at that stuff and kind yeah. of gotten some inspiration from it for sure. Uh, yeah. Marcus is reminding us also, Mark Badger did some work as well. Was that on Dreadstar? No, no. No? Oh, on, uh, on Flag? On, on Flag. Yeah. I seem to recall that, too. I remember Badger, the first time I heard of Badger was when he had done the um, the Gargoyle miniseries for Marvel in 85. That was the first time I, I, I heard of him. And I think it was around that time, or maybe a little after, he might have been doing Flag. Um, but yeah, I remember doing flag as well. Thanks for reminding us. Mark. Yeah, it was Mark. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Um, Nick is asking though, Alan Moore wrote back, um, in, in what, in flag backups of what? Oh, I don't, that doesn't sound I familiar. Remember that. Of what, of who, of what character of American flag? 
See, that's why I, I thought that's 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 when the uh, this this ten second uh, broadcast delay pisses me off. We got to wait for the people that got to wait for for Nick to to answer the question. But um, CJ, what do you mean by that, Honey Badger? Oh, and Nick is saying, did Alan Moore write backups or a two issue story arc of 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 what though? Might have been American I flag. Know. I don't remember that. If somebody Google Alan Moore. Did, yeah, somebody American it. flag. I would have. I think I would have remembered that, and I don't remember, yeah, I don't remember that. that. Yeah, but I'm open to being wrong. Yeah, but thanks. For I mean, I think up. Alan Moore went right from Swamp Thing um, to you know he did a couple Superman issues, and then he he went right to um, doing Watchmen. Right. So Rick Rick is telling us that he did some backup stories. Rick. So Rick, you're saying Alan Moore did backup Luke stories. McDonald. Okay. Yeah. Of, I'm, I'm, yeah. Okay. Of, of American flag and hey, what's up, Mark Vega? Luke McDonald followed. Yeah, that's in. that's oh, right. Luke it was McDonald. Luke McDonald. Yeah. And yeah. then it was Medina. Thanks for thanks for clarifying and giving us the info scoop yeah, on that, right. Mark. Appreciate it. Okay. Yeah, I couldn't remember who it was right after Starlin. So yeah. Um, but yeah, Rick's saying he's confirming. That oh, Alan wow. Moore did stories, but of, of American flag stories that Don Lomax drew? That's so weird. Don Lomax is the guy who did that Vietnam comic. Uh, wow. I forget what it was called. Something Vietnam or uh, I, don't, I forget what it was called. Well, I know what I'll be looking at tomorrow night to see if I can find okay. it. Interesting. Well, thank you all for dropping the knowledge. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. It's always good to know these things that people can go back and check out, you know? Excellent. Uh, but yeah, let's get back into the show and tell everybody. And let us check out the next piece, which is. Yeah, wow. So George Perez and Dennis Jensen from 1990. Yeah. Prime. Um, there's so much going on with this page. Um, and to be honest, I told you about that page I'm picking up from. Uh, yeah. Uh, Michael Lovitz and. For a brief time, I thought about selling this, even though I picked it up. But I, I right. saw Matt Kennedy talking about, you know, art that means a lot and things like that. And I, I, after I heard Matt Kennedy talking about, you know, this piece would be, you know, pieces like this are, you know, George at his peak. It's just not the characters that, you know, you're going to pay, you know, tens of thousands of dollars for. And when you look yeah. at this, this is everything. You know, this to me this is George at his prime, right? He was just coming off of Infinity Gauntlet, and if you look at that that panel on the lower left, which is kind of at an angle, yeah. uh, and then you compare that to some of the panels in Infinity Gauntlet uh, with, with the uh, Sanctum Sanctorium, you know, very. I mean, it's the same art, right? Um, albeit with a different inker, um, yeah. and you can spin this page around and look at the lettering, and and it's just. You know, and this is a giant page too. I picked this up from Jordan right before Christmas. Oh. Um, he was he was selling this piece to pay off, I think, an apparel cover that he wants to buy. Okay, uh, and he was selling off some of this. And uh, I wasn't sure about this page. In fact, Nick and I were I think we were trying to pick it up at the same time. Um, and I think Nick kind of let me have it. Um, it was one of those amateur dueling art dealers. And um, man, when I got it um, and opened it up, I just kind of touched it right and felt the the lettering balloons and, and the inks and the texture it is really a phenomenal piece so yeah. i wound up going back and and getting in fact i have it close by the malibu comic uh and reading the malibu comic and this learning about prime and this opened up the doorway to me learning all about malibu comics which i had no idea what malibu comics was about um i think actually the rights of malibu are over at marvel now if i'm not mistaken but if you look at you know that bottom panel um you know and that's that's the uh, that's prime's father who you know apparently is selling drugs in this nightmare scenario uh okay. the time that george probably put into this page um is is just stunning um and even though dennis jensen is listed as an inker i swear i see some george inks on this page <laughs> um when i look at some of the other stuff that george had, george had inked um but uh I, whatever yeah. regardless it was a great job it was a really great inking job it it is you know if you look at the different line weights etc um yeah. and there's just so much going on in this page 
um, it's 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 a it's like a time capsule. Everything that George does well uh, for me, and I've never seen any kind of lettering like that. You know, where he drew within the letters. Uh, maybe someone else has, uh, but uh, yeah, this is this has quickly become like this is another keeper. Like no, I'm I'm this this epitomizes why I like George so much. So I'm I'm holding on to this. Oh, that's great. That's really cool. And uh, Marcus, uh, you're making fun of me? Where Where's that comment? There it is. I posed for Prime. Yeah. Really? Talk, talk about polar opposites, you know? I'm, 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 I'm pretty skinny now, so um, I definitely could not pose for <laughs> Prime or anybody even remotely as big as Prime, but uh, thank you. Well, he was... He was silly big, but I think that I guess that was part of the, the whole idea. Oh yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Marcus said that Prime was uh, Prime is Shazam. I didn't read it, so is that is that is that the case? Uh, Larry yeah, Wong. Yeah, I think there is. Larry Wong is calling him Dark Shazam, so it's like it's like a darker Shazam. Yeah, I think there's some where he had the powers of the gods or something. There might be something to that. Um, <laughs> I have to go back and read. Like I said, I read the issue and I read a little bit. I mean, I went as far as reading about Prime on on Wikipedia, and yeah. I think I, I I bought the issue and and read it. Okay. Um, but you know, that's a weird page. You know, I, just after I said, well, I never bought a page for you know art that then I had my long box. That was an that's that's an exception, you know, um, just because it was George. Yeah, for sure. Oh, and Derek is cl clarifying. Thanks, Derek. It's a young boy who transforms into a big muscled hero. Okay, yeah. so the, the idea behind it is like Shazam, yeah. Huh. Uh, oh yeah, he, see, yeah, that's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like Shazam. It was a kid, but yeah, uh, yeah but he maintained. I think the whole idea was he maintained the the mentality of a thirteen year old. So the dialogue was. But that's know, how Shazam is. Is it? Yeah, I don't know. Is it? Well, I know the Shazam movie. That's how it is. Yeah. I never watched it, so I don't. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, whatever. Never read Prime, so never read any of that. I never read any of that Malibu stuff. Yeah, uh, I that was all. Never caught any of it. So, but uh, okay, let us take a look at the next piece, everyone. And for that, we go to Hardcore Station. Speaking of Jim Starlin, my friend. Yeah. So you know, again, having lost that page. Um, I was looking for something to, to, to fill the void, um, a big giant bad guy, you know, very similar in my mind to, to that, um, DC comics presents 28. And, and this is a rare page too, because Jim inked this, um, Joe Rubenstein inked one of the issues, but this is an issue where Jim did his own inks. And right. um, this is another example of what you can kind of sometimes get away with buying on Heritage on Wednesday nights when when nobody's looking, um, because I, I this was stupid cheap, and um, I, I just I just love it. In fact, I love it. If you look at it, the coloring actually takes away a lot of the art. Um, this is a, a you know one of the cases where you absolutely want to have the the OA rather than yeah. you know the colored piece because so much gets lost. Um, and I forget what this bad guy's name is. I wrote it up in the, uh, the description. Um, but this actually takes place within the DC universe. Um, uh, hardcore oh. stations. Yeah. Hardcore station is on the outer sector, uh, outer fringes of sector 2814, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. And, um, it's kind of like this cantina. It reminds you like, uh, Tatooine from, from, uh, oh, uh, yeah. uh from Sorry. star Wars. Yeah. And, you know, Green Lanterns fly in and out. And there was a bigger plan for this character. Uh, if you remember, Starling came in um, around this time and he did Adam Strange. Um, he did a couple other series. He did some some Hawkman stories, I believe. And, you know, he, he was at DC to try to kind of remake the, the, the sci-fi component of it. And this was one of the, the books that he did with Hardcore Station. And I, to be honest, I didn't read this. Is another I didn't read the book, yeah, until I got the page. Um, so again, you know, kind of against some of the rules I kind of try to live by as a collector. Yeah, yeah. But you look at the 
you know, just this page. It's all Starlet inks and, and pencils yeah, and inks. And it just beautiful. screams, you know, it just screams what's great about Starlin. Yeah, gorgeous, gorgeous uh, uh, rendering with the inks. So tight yeah. and beautiful, you know, in detail. Yeah. Uh, and Derek is letting us know again, not dropping the knowledge that his name is Sinar. That's right. Thank you. Yeah, I, I know I, I wrote it up. I just didn't recall it. Cause, yeah. Because uh, Ruben doesn't give us any heads up on what pages he's going to pick. So I was. Yes, as I always one. say, as I always say, everybody, uh, as I usually tell you guys, um, once again, Tom has no idea. I did all the picking, and Tom has not only no idea what I picked, but he has, well, because he has no idea what I picked, he clearly has no idea what order I'm going to show anything in. Yeah. He doesn't know what's showing up. So, um, yeah. So there you go. But uh, no, excellent. Nice one. And yes, uh, yeah, that's, that's why I like, that's why I like posting the original art next to the printed versions. Cause yeah, I'm I glad like, you did that. I like, I like to promote how much nicer it is to have the original art without the color. You know, that's yeah. why I like showing the color, you know, because in most cases it's nicer in black and white, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. CJ, those knee, those, those skull kneecaps, uh, knee covers were pretty cool. Yeah. And Hembeck would give those skull knees swirly eyes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Synergy. Indeed, Rick, just what I was thinking. Ruben, the mystery man of art. Apologies, have to check out. Sounds good, Comic Art Boston. Keep well yourself. Thank you for dropping in. Uh, Ruben, the slide maker. Got to do it, my friend. Got to do it. Uh, Spencer had a bunch of Starlin Hardcore station pages at reasonable prices. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there was a time certainly when nobody really wanted them. So. Um, yeah, and I didn't. I didn't get that too. I I lost money on a Starlin cover from. Um, uh, it was Death of the New Gods, and uh, I, I don't I don't understand the fall off around Starlin's art. Um, I think he's great, um, but apparently, if it's not Adam Warlock or Thanos, yeah, if it's not if it's not that Marvel it. stuff, people yeah. don't really usually care as much or at all. You know, yeah. yeah, yeah, I guess it is what it is. You know, um, excellent. All right, why don't we take a look at the next piece then? And from Marvel, we go over to DC, uh, or not, not, not Marvel. Was that the, was that the, um, sorry. That was, was DC. Uh, That's DC. Hard, hard, yeah, it was DC, Hardcore Station. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. Was DC. yeah exactly. Uh, we stick with DC then, and uh, as we will for most of the night anyways. Of course. Uh, and we will check this cool piece out. Wow. Yeah. So um, this is, I, I'm just thrilled to get this page. And this was an eBay pickup. I got it within an hour of when it was posted. Um, this, as I said, you know, earlier, this is, um, uh, this was Dick Dillon's last um, issue before he passed at the, oh, wow. yeah, that's at, right. the at, at the um, crazy young age of, of 52. Mm -hmm. um, Dick Dillon, drew 120 issues without missing a deadline he drew justice yeah. league from 19 from issue 63 or 64 which was i think 1968 uh, all the way to 1980. um i would say I, there's somebody in the chat may know but i i would say one would be hard pressed to think of who drew up drew more characters over a 12-year period than than dick dylan and even very, even very, yeah very and even true. Alex Alex Ross is is a huge fan of Dick Dillon because of of the consistency he was able to keep up for oh, twelve years on a on a team book. Um, yeah, I I absolutely agree, Tom. I I in fact I always really enjoyed that entire era of Dick Dillon on on um, Justice League. Not only because he kept a nice consistent look to it, but he was always a very solid draftsman. Um, and, and yeah, it was just nice to always know that no matter, for, for so many years, no matter what issue you would pick up, it was going to look like you expected it to look, you know? Yeah. I, I think it, there was yeah. something and, that. Well, his best stuff was Ink by Dick Giordano. And it was about, I don't know, yes, it was around that 120 issues or so. Dick Giordano did a lot of his inks, and that stuff was beautiful. McLaughlin was, was good, um, but 
Dick Dillon, I think, a lot depended on who who was inking him. And, and I know he was a little challenged yeah. to going to the smaller pages uh, when they went from the large art to the smaller 11, 11 by 17. I, I read that about some of his, you know, uh, some of his challenges. But the man kept this up for 12 years. And this particular page, like I said, this was, um, I always wanted a, a page from Dick's last, you know, uh, issue of Justice yeah. League because I grew up. You know, when you don't have a lot of money as a kid, the team books are the ones that give you the most bang for the buck. And Justice yeah. League became, quickly became, you know, my comic art, you know, or my comic book, yeah. um, my favorite comic book. You know, downstairs, I've got, I think, every issue from 63 up until 220. Uh, and, and, you know, 70% of those are Dick Dillon. Um, and this particular page is the first time the Justice League actually meets the new gods. Um, in this particular oh, page, cool. and wow. and it's Nick. And I think Nick pointed out all the Kirby crackle in this page because obviously that yeah. you guys were a Kirby creation, and I didn't really pick that up until Nick pointed it out um, yeah. when I showed him this page. Um, but but that particular page at the bottom is is it made me a New Gods fan too. I wonder <laughs> going back and reading about New Gods. Um, oh, that's very cool. Very yeah. Cool. So. Um, you know, it's just a shame that, you know, you, you lose an artist at such an early age who was so yeah. prolific. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And this was sad. It was right in the middle of a three-part series. And, of course, George took over with 184, um, yeah. which he wanted to do. He really wanted to do Justice League. So, and I have a page from 184, um, which that's the one I got from Nick. And, um, you know, the idea, it's this, this, it's kind of a passing of the baton between two of the greatest team artists, you know, of their era. You know, yeah. Dylan George Perez. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, Wes, what's up? Good to see you. Been a minute. Lovely to have Rick, you drop by. Rick, you asked if I was a, a Grell Legion fan. Uh, yes, I, I've got a lot of those downstairs. I'm a more of a Mike Grell. If I could get some really good pages from uh, his Green Lantern work, especially the stuff that was inked by Terry Austin, either from, you know, to those backup issues of The Flash, there's some really good pages there. Or, or when they came back with, uh, Grell came back with uh, uh, Green Lantern, Green Arrow with number 90. Um, yeah. But yeah, Gre Grell did some amazing work uh, on, on, on a, as, a, as a team book. But it's a lot of work, you know, because you get the same payment per page as if you're drawing yeah. Batman, right? And yeah. It's always, that was always the hard part. Yeah, exactly. It's one thing if the team is the X-Men, because you knew that, you know, you couldn't turn that down. I was like, oh, crap, you know you're going to get paid well, you know? Yeah. But it's like when it's not a necessarily one of the top selling books, it's kind of like, wow, that's a lot of work, extra work for the same page rate, you know? Well, just quickly, another note about Dick Dillon is that <clears throat> if you remember, Steve Englehart came over to write that book. Um, and when he came over, they went to these giant size issues. They were 60 cents. Oh, right. I remember those. Sure. And that was 33 pages. So Dick Dillon went from doing 17 or 18 or what was it, 20? I forget what, how many, what the page count was. And I remember reading an interview with Steve Englehart. He just said, yeah, we're going to go to 33 pages. And Dick Dillon said, okay. <laughs> and he just did it. You know, he just, he yeah. just did it. Yeah. Um, so there's an incredible amount of work that he did over the years. Hats off, you know. Yeah, uh, Mark, you mentioned Mike Nasser. Mike Nasser is on my list. Um, especially if I could find those adventure stories um, that were inked by Terry Austin. Those Mike Nasser, Terry Austin pages, um, there was a Hawkman, there was a Martian Manhunter. Those things are beautiful. And Mike Nasser and Terry Austin also did, made, I think, Black Harry more beautiful than she ever was. Um, big fan of, of Nasser. And speaking of Nasser... Uh, just a nice little segue because it's uh, perfect timing. I uh, want to let you guys know, those of you who had seen the um, Superman piece in my calf gallery by Mike Nasser and read my description, you'll, you know, you'll remember it was that piece where I said, I'm listing it as Mike Nasser, um, but I really, really strongly feel that even though he did a great neil adams technique back in those days i i feel very very uh, suspicious that adams probably inked it i feel like adam inked my superman piece anyways 
Um, I still don't have absolute proof or anything, but yesterday I added, um, right in the, at the top of my description, I added a little bit of info plus an extra additional image I added um, because of something I saw on Facebook from Joe Rubenstein. So if you want to go check it out, um, I can save you the time and just tell you Rubenstein thinks that most of it is probably inked by Neil Adams. Um, so still not a 100% you know certainty but i was kind of uh kind of happy to see a, you know somebody sort of back me up on on what i suspect so there you go love mike nasser as well so uh perfect timing figured i'd mention that yeah um and mark says i agree you have great taste tom respect there you go well yeah i'd, I'd like to i'd rather have the page than great taste but yeah, yeah i mean those mike nasser page and there's someone on cap um who has a bunch of those pages and i've asked them a number of times and you know it's like no i'm not selling my my mike nasser terry austin pages right right but yeah thank you I, i'm glad somebody else appreciates that work there was there was too little of it the the, the nasser austin pages i think mm -hmm. he also did a there was a nightwing flame bird you know those were the characters that were in the uh city of candor and there's some real life oh. mike nasser pages that he drew of, of Nightwing and Flamebird that are out there. Right. All right, everyone. Well, let us move on to the next piece uh, in tonight's show and tell. And for that, we move up to uh, the more contemporary era for another one of uh, Tom's favorite artists. And for that, we have, well, we've, we've seen him and we will see him more tonight. Um, he's like the show, the showstopper for tonight, I guess you can say. Here we go. Yeah, I, this was crazy because I, it's a George Perez cover that I got for $900 on eBay. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, I'm never going to own a, a George Perez, uh, cover, um, from a Titans, um, or from a Justice League. I mean, those things are, are, you know. We all know what those are going for. Nasser yeah. was like Adams on steroids. Yeah, for a while he was. Um, his lines were crisper. Um, he actually, again, yeah, I was a big fan when he was at his peak, Mike Nasser. But anyway, back to this page. Um, uh, the um, what I love about this page is the use of negative space. Right. right. Um, it's it's definitely a a George page, but it's also it stands alone as a a, a piece of art um not just comic art but just a beautiful piece of art right um, and you know for a while i'd have friends come over and look at it and it wasn't like, well that's not a superhero what is that yeah and I, I had to explain now this series was terrible uh it made no sense it was right it was it was a crisis offshoot that eventually the, the whole story the continuity was just blown away by something else because i tried to read it um uh but Hey, it's it, and what's interesting about this page is that bottom half is actually uh, it's like an overlay because all three of the issues of the miniseries, the bottom was the same. Um, and I believe Scott Koblish drew the bottom. And for a while, I was going to have Scott Koblish. I found him on Instagram. I was going to have him redo that bottom piece so I'd actually have a piece of art to go with it. I still might do that. Um, sorry, sorry, listen, Tom, sorry, sorry, sorry. Can let me? Sorry, I I, I yeah. don't mean to interrupt. I no, don't. Okay. Yeah, I don't know that i followed what you were saying there the bottom the crowd yeah. scene you mean? yeah so let me let sorry if I, I lost i'll rewind so this was the three issue mini series and george drew the covers for one and two and right. not three right and the bottom of of all three of these uh, this mini series the bottom right. is all the same so if you look at the black line oh. under under amethyst sword there this is this actual page is only it's a cover it's a it's two thirds of a page. Right. And the bottom and the bottom was the same in all three issues. Okay. Um, yeah. What's interesting okay. is always you lift I have the overlay. It came with the overlay, but not with not the original art. But George okay. signed it twice. He signed it up under um on the left side under the guy's arm. I forget who that is. It's in yes. my um, yep. Yeah. Yes. And then he signed it in the in the white space underneath the, the oh yeah, yeah. The bottom part. Yeah. On the bottom but, border. Yeah, but again, and this this was a few months before he passed uh, that I picked this up. But 
you know, a George cover for 900 bucks sold. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I, I have a little soft spot for uh, the girl, Amethyst. I'm, I'm assuming Amethyst. it's Amethyst. Yeah. yeah, it's Amethyst and it's Shade the Changing Man. And that's some, that's Shade the Changing Man in the background. And then it's some oh, wizard. Okay. I forget, I forget who the wizard is. Yeah. Um, there again, it, it was not a, um, not a story you want to spend too much time trying to try and understand. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. I'll take your word for it. Mark, you said you have a Mike Nasser Batman page. He did a nice job on that stuff too. I remember yeah, the that. DC Spectacular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he did some great stuff. Uh, well, that was kind of the era where, again, you know, he was doing the Neil Adams thing and he did it really well. So he did it well. Yeah. And then he, and then he, well, we all know. If you know Mike, yeah. the story of Mike Nasser, we're going to have to get into it. Yeah, no, no, let's not get into that. <laughs> All right, um, excellent. So from there, we actually stay with uh, the contemporary era. And we're going to take a, a look at a piece that I had to make two different slides for. And for that, uh, this is uh, some beautiful art that, uh, well, now you'll know what it is, Tom, because I'm going to say that this is uh, an artist that, uh, that Nikki B., often has and offers for sale. Ah, and yeah. For yeah. That, let us take a look Fernando. at yeah. Justice League number 17 from the Rebirth, um, yeah, the Rebirth series. So this, this, this is a total Nick Berucci influence on me. Um, the reason that he caught my attention is just the way that Nick would say, Fernando Pasaran on a show, you know? And I was like, <laughs> who is this guy? I corrected um, him, but he still, he still actually said it wrong. Yeah, he I always know. says Fernando. He always says Fernando Pasarin. It's Fernando Pasarin. Pasarin. Yeah, that's Is why. In the chat? Yeah, because in Spanish, the accent tells you which syllable to uh, emphasize more. So since well, because, the yeah. since the accent there on the I is on the last syllable, that means you emphasize the in part. So it's Pasarin. So you've got an accent. In your first name. How do you say your first name? Ruben. 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 Yeah. Ruben. All right. Ruben, yeah. But you know, it doesn't sound Ruben. good in it doesn't sound good in English, so obviously it's okay to, you know, say you know, put the emphasis in English on the on the first syllable, not the second one. Okay. You know. Well, yeah. um let yeah, let's get back to Fernando Passarin. Um, yeah, there we go. <laughs> holy crap. Uh, again, this is another um I think it was Comic Link on a Wednesday night. Um I I just can't believe how much detail there is here from a pencil right um it's it's just stunning to look at especially as a a double page spread and i don't know i, I think i posted the prelim which is on the back and the amount of work that fernando put into this between the prelim on the back and you know the art itself is yeah. is just stunning the amount of detail the scope and the scale oh yeah uh, this reminded me of uh, an alien where they find the um, uh, the space jockey ship with the chest burster coming out of it. That scope, that scale of of you know foreign, you know, like a uh, an alien entity. Um, and again, this is a page where I think the colors don't do it justice. You know, I um, I, I don't you know, know if you actually ink this page or not or if you just colored over the inks i'm not sure um let me see they probably somebody inked it or they darkened the inks and in, you know with computers like, yeah, yeah contrast or something yeah um yeah. might have been yeah yeah but it, but been. It, yeah but it might have it might have been inked it might have been inked i i if it was inked i typically on my slides will not put the inker's name if we're just showing off a pencil piece anyways you know what i mean so yeah, yeah. okay yeah, but yeah, I mean, but, but you, know, yeah. you know what, uh, Tom? What it, uh, what it, when I when I saw this piece, what it made me think of is like right away. I, I especially the top panel, I just feel like I'm looking at a really cool, um, not a storyboard because those are rougher, but like a concept design for a science fiction movie. Yeah, you yeah, know? like a story. Yeah, exactly, like a storyboard for for something that would go to cinema. You know. Yeah. Um, something like where the where where a bunch of the starships and star trek would dock or something right yeah, um yeah. yeah and and i picked this page up for 300 bucks you know stuff so you can get stunning bargain, pages yeah. out there 
you know, um, you don't have to spend a boatload of money to, to, to find stunning pages. Um, you just got to work at it sometimes. So I felt really lucky. Uh, in fact, there is a, a cast member who's got the page before this. It's the opening page, page one, and this is two and three. And I, I said, hey, I just picked this up and I'd love, and they're like, no, you know. Really? Wow. Yeah, they're not going to give it up. And that's fine, you know. Um, yeah, of I get course, it. of course. Um, but it's uh, their yeah, right. it's, yeah, it's the right. But, you know, as soon as I got it, I really wanted to get the preceding page. Um, yeah. So it's out there. Um, somebody has it. But yeah, what a fantastic piece of art. Um, just the amount of work. Think about how much a, an artist makes an hour to do a page like that. Not much, right? Yeah. No, no. no. When you think amount of work, not much. No, no. It's not. It's not enough for the amount of uh, work yeah. and effort and skill that goes into it. Let's just say that you know. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, uh. But you're right. I, I'm glad you mentioned the 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 the, the issue with the the, cat, the the cost factor. See, that's a good example that you know. I on my various shows, I've always kind of brought that up. We've talked about that here a lot. Um, you know, the fact that, oh, you know, a lot of people always complain, yeah, I wish I got in earlier because everything's so expensive now. There's no, you know, everything's expensive. And I get what they're saying. Yes, for the most part, it's true. But I don't like when people say that, like, nothing is affordable anymore. What they really mean to say is nothing with the most popular characters is affordable anymore. That is closer to the truth. But you can still buy some really beautiful comic book illustration for really like affordable money. Stuff yeah. that offers bang for the buck value type value. You know what I mean? Like that. Great piece. Yeah. Like 300 bucks. Like, you know. And, and we had Matt Kennedy on the show. He was talking about that. And it goes back to that uh, Perez uh, Prime page, right? It's the same thing, right? Yeah. That's George Perez at his best, yeah. you know, from 1995 or six. And I got it from Jordan for 1200 bucks. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like Marcus says, everything's relative, you know? Yeah. Yeah, when it comes to cost and all that, for sure. Um, okay, excellent. Well, beautiful piece. Let us see what we have next on the docket. Yes, for that one, we're going to something a bit more vintage. To one of my all-time favorites, DC uh, books, aside from the Superman character. And for that, we go to... Teen Titans number six from yeah. the first, <laughs> the first Baxter issue after uh, that that George did, you know, after he left. Yeah, well, I always wanted a Titans Baxter issue and uh, page, and I got it. Um, just yeah. he happened to be a different artist. Um, <laughs> funny story about this page: I I did get this on Heritage, um, and uh, when I was talking to Michael, uh, I think Michael saw me post it, or I mentioned to him at at OAX. He owned this page and he sent it to Heritage and they they mistakenly posted this as George doing the art. And the bid shot up, right? Yeah. Um, and Michael had to call Heritage and say, no, 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 <laughs> that's Dan Jurgens. And they had to repost it. And I think that I got it on the repost. You know, um, you know what, Tom? I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I don't know what they were thinking. Yes, I will say. The, the rock formations in the first mm -hmm. panel are very, very George-looking, right. okay? I admit that. But other than that, there's no way I would ever confuse the, the, the Titans no. figures and heads for, for George. So I don't know how that happened. That's kind of weird. I, I think it was the rocks. I think you're absolutely right. I guess so. Yeah. I, I, yeah I, you know, there's a lot of turnover in the industry, and they had a rookie looking at it. Not sure. Or it was coming from Michael, and they know it, he has Perez pages. I, I'm not sure why. But, yeah. but that's the story that Michael told me. But I, I got an opportunity to have Dan sign this page at OAX. And I, I pulled it out and he started laughing because he says, look at the dialogue. The, Marv wrote this script thinking that George was going to do it. And George could find a way to do it. And yeah. George would also edit some of the dialogue and he'd be able to... Dude, and, and Dan was very young at the time. And he said, I had no idea what to do. You know, how do I get all that? He says, if I wrote this page, it, that would have been two pages of dialogue. So um, it, he said he still jokes with Marv Wolfman about this page. Um, yeah. That, that you know, um, having to get all this dialogue on the page was a real challenge, you know, because, Mar again, Marv wrote this thinking that George was going to do it. 
you know, there's also this idea, well, no, George left to do crisis. George had done with the Titans. He was not necessarily thinking about doing crisis when he left Titans. He was just done with Titans. Yeah. Um, and, and then uh, crisis came along um, shortly thereafter. But this page is huge. Um, and I like this page a lot because it's got all those characters in it. I'm a huge Titans fan. You can, again, you can see over my shoulder, I got my, my little Titan statue. And um, uh, it's just, a, it's a big giant page with great dialogue. Um, yeah. And, um, and I, again, cheap, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, Actually, you don't, cheap. Well, these pages are cheap. They're affordable. I should affordable. Yeah. 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 No, that's, that's fair enough. You know, as it, as it should be now that, that George's name is not attached to it anymore, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So no, that's a good, good, a great way to get, if you're, a, especially if you're a Titans fan, uh, you go after those, um, Baxter books. Uh, well, except for the Garcia Lopez issues, of course, cause that stuff's getting pretty expensive. But uh, there's plenty of Titans art out there that if you don't have to have George Perez, you can get plenty of Titans art for, for very affordable yeah. prices, you know? Um, hey, what's up, Karen? Hi to all of us, Tom and me and my wife. Oh, look at that. Everyone in the chat. Well, very lovely. Thank you. Good evening to you. Thank you for coming in. And... Um, yeah, Rick, I wanted to see what were you talking about, Beastie Boy? Oh, because of Beast Boy, right, right. See, Beast I see Boy. I, well, I didn't catch it at first because uh, to me he's always changeling. I hate Beast Boy, but whatever. I, I knew him as changeling. That's how I was introduced to him. So I prefer yeah. that. I don't like Beast Boy, but Beast yeah. PC could screw up anything. Name yeah. and, oh, Jesus. Knights of old, what's up, man? DC and Marvel 60s to 90s is not affordable. Compare it to the cost of well, okay, Let's not get into the cost of living. Listen, like I said, I get it. I get it. Okay, I get it. I'm just saying comic art in general. Yes, all that older stuff. Yes, you're right. You know, I, I, I get it. For the most part, most of it is expensive. I get it. I'm just saying a lot of us used to balk at buying anything that wasn't vintage. Okay. But then once you start getting priced out of vintage stuff and your choice becomes either get out of the hobby or expand your horizons and maybe get more contemporary stuff. That's what I'm saying, especially if you if you're willing to do that, you can find a lot of art with your favorite characters, which is really great stuff and offers you a lot of bang for your buck. So, yeah, that's yeah. That's and you know. And while everybody's focusing on that high price 60s to 90s stuff, there's some really good bargains that can sneak through. You know, the Wednesday Night Heritage auctions, the Comic Connect auctions, you can find some really good stuff. Thanks, Lee. And, and Mark, I do want to see your Nasser page, uh, your Nasser uh, stuff in your cat gallery. So I'll, uh, I'll check that out as soon as we're done. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to figure out, uh, get in touch with each other by email because Mark said he doesn't have a cat gallery because he doesn't have a scanner. I thought Mark Fong said, if you like Nasser, check out my cab. Oh, he did? Yeah. Let me see. But he just told Lee that I don't have a cab page as I don't have a scanner. Um, so, Mark, do, do you have a cab page? Yeah, clear that up for us, Mark. What's up with that? How can you show Tom your page? Yeah, there we go. Okay. <laughs> um. Okay, so let me see a couple of uh, other um, comments. That was funny. Alberto says, uh, oh, George did it if you're selling it. George didn't do it if you're buying it. Yeah. <laughs> the Titans page. Very true, very true. Uh, Jurgens is affordable and underrated. Well, affordable if it's not Superman related, for sure. Starting to kind of get uh, unaffordable on Superman. Um, hi, Karen from Larry. Hi, Larry from Karen. Rich says, I finally landed a press Titans page from the first Baxter issue. That's true. Yeah. From, um, I, and fantastic too, because that's one of the few issues he ever penciled and inked himself. Yeah. Well, Rich. Absolutely. Yeah. Rich, what issue did you get? Did you get the, one of the first two that he inked? I happen to have it right here. I just pulled it out oh, of yeah. my... One of my few long boxes I have still. Yeah, I, yeah but, 
to reread this five issue story. Yeah, so. but do, you, do you have this? Oh, look at that. <laughs> what is that? Well, this is this is that cover. But well, I, I don't actually see it. It's, yeah, but it, but it's a yeah. poster. It was it was the one at the comic oh, shop. Poster. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But but That's I so actually cool. went into Photoshop and I actually so it could blow up, I actually did a lot of recoloring to it. Oh, okay. So, oh yeah. So okay. if you're gonna pull yours out, I'll have mine is bigger, just to let you know. <laughs> All right. If we're whipping it out, you win. You got the you got the giant one. All right. That's funny. Um, yeah, Marcus, I, I'm aware that he was Beast Boy first before Changeling. I know. That's why I specified I was introduced to him as Changeling. <laughs> That's why I like Changeling. I thought it was a cool name, and I just found Beast Boy to be cheesy, and I don't know. I don't know. It just seems like something you think of when you're trying to entertain a, a, a young child, not, you know, not very creative. But anyways, that's just how I feel. Uh, your mileage may vary. And um, Mark says, thanks, Lee. I will check out. Oh, he was saying, I'll check out your page. Okay. Okay, that's it. Maki Poo Poo. Heritage, they just kill you with the buying buyers, premium tax, and shipping. Yeah, I know. They suck. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I say it out loud? I'm sorry. Uh, 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 that was Lee's page. Yeah, okay. He doesn't have one. Yeah, he's confirming. Uh, one Master DPS from Huntress. Who does? Who, who has that? I've seen that online. Who has the Master DPS? Was that is that the Lee's? I've seen that. Yes, it was the first issue, Tom, that George Inc. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Good for you, Rich. Those things are gold. There was yeah. a page. Exactly. Yeah, Good night, again. There was a page that George Inc. It was on Heritage. It was from the Baxter. And it was just a lot of clouds. And I think it had uh, people on the street and uh, Donna and um, uh Robin and, and uh, Wonder Girl were flying, but it was a laminated page. Uh, the art was laminated, and I, I I bid on it a little bit, but I didn't want to go too high because the page was laminated. But now I wish I had um, those those pages that he inked are just stunning from those Baxter issues. Good for yeah. you. Yeah, exactly. Hydra says he has it. What do you have, Hydra? You have the page with the jet and the clouds, the laminated one. Oh, or the Huntress, the Huntress double oh, the page. Huntress, okay. Maybe that's what you're talking about? Yeah, maybe that's where I've seen it. Yeah, it sounds familiar. Um, the doors do a good change. Ah, uh, very good. Yeah, there's a... Next there with the music. Like, yeah. And I know Tom, I know Tom, you're a big music guy too. I know that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Morrison Hotel, like that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, night, TJ, night. Okay, good night to everybody. Yeah, oh, we're losing. Our, we're losing them. We got to. We got to. We got to. We got to step it up. We're losing them. Oh, uh, well, that's just my wife who's leaving. Actually, so oh, okay. she, she she goes to bed very early. So, um, any way to delaminate safely? What do you mean? Oh, the the laminated page, probably not. Oh no, no, you can't. As far, I, I, as, I know, as far as I know, you can't delaminate. There's no way. It's just you. You'll destroy it if you try. So. I uh, used to have a page from Pines 39 that Perez also inked, but sadly sold it years ago. A uh, story of a lot of uh, our yeah, lives, I guess, you know? Yeah. Yeah, no way to delaminate. Okay, excellent. So let us jump back into the next piece, everybody. And from Teen Titans, we go to, I think it's JLA again. Let's check it out and see what it is. Yeah, JLA well, 184. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you about. should have, you, yeah, yeah. So that's all right. So. Um, this is the page I've talked about a couple times tonight. Um, uh, I, I was able to um, tell my story to Nick, and uh, he agreed to um, let me buy it. So I now have uh, 183 and 184. Um, I have Dick Dillon's last and George's first. Um, both both pages have Batman, Huntress, and uh, Mr. Miracle in there. And um, you know, if yeah, there you go. So, um, and these two pages, they're actually, I don't try to move my camera, but they're on a shelf next to each other over my uh, left shoulder. And uh, I'm thrilled. Uh, I now have a page of George's from Crisis. I have a page from Titans, uh, two pages from Titans. Uh, and I have a page uh, of, of Justice League and JLA Avengers, which to me, those are his, you know, his top DC work. Um, and yeah. I love I love the planets coming together. I'll uh, a little bit of the, the look of the crisis planets that we'd see 
you know, maybe five, six years later. Um, uh, I love the detail uh, on, the, on the background, the, the, the Perez detail on the computer screen. Uh, and, and just his storytelling, um, you know, his storytelling of wide shot, tight shot. You know, I, I have a background in video and video production. And you could see George was directing. He was directing this story. Um, and he was able to show the scope of, you know, um, Apocalypse and, and the, the dungeons of Apocalypse, but, but still tell this compelling story as a, as a director moving the camera around. Um, that's what makes him such a great artist. Not the fact that he, just the fact that he could draw great detail and, you know, do emotions and faces really well and draw distinct faces for characters between issues. Um, yeah. But he was, he was a great director and, and this page shows what a great director he was. Yeah. Beautiful. And, uh, one last look, everybody, since they were consecutive issues. Yeah. Here's the last Dick Dillon issue with Frank McLaughlin. And then, of course, the next issue followed up by the great George Perez. <clears throat> and again, keeping the consistency in the inking, I guess they wanted to. They kept Frank McLaughlin on inks. Yeah. So, yeah, that's fun. Yeah, it's great. It's cool. It's cool that it uh, you have uh, one of each, you know? Yeah. yeah. And if, if you would sell me your dead man, then I'd have an adventure comics from Jim Apero and then... And the next issue, um, well, never mind. It was, it was. <laughs> that ain't happening. <laughs> and Lee says, all the fourth world characters just got to love it. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, that was fun about that. Very cool. Okay. All right, everyone. Let us continue with the show and tell and go on to the next piece. This next piece is very special, uh, contemporary, but very special to uh, Tom for... Uh, Reasons that he will make clear to you all um, in a moment. So let's uh, listen to what Tom has to say about this piece. Well, um, <clears throat> yeah, just a huge Watchmen fan. Um, and, you know, if you look at the work that the titles that DC was publishing, starting, you know, my the summer that I had graduated or was about to graduate high school, uh, 84, I was a junior going into my senior year. You had um, Alan Moore Swamp Thing. Uh, then you had Crisis. Then you had Dark Knight and Watchmen. Then you had Brian Ballin and Alan Moore on uh, The Killing Joke in 88. Um, you had Death and Family in 89. You had this kind of, every year DC was doing something great. And the one that just jumped out for, for me um, was Watchmen. And um, I didn't really realize how much I actually liked Watchmen. I kept going back and reading it um, until I saw the movie, which I thought the movie was fantastic. And But I always wanted to have Rorschach in Chicago, right? Um, some sort of iconic representation of Rorschach in Chicago. Right. Um, and um, Miles popped up uh, on... Uh, one of the pre OAX um, shows that Bill did. And he was doing some Marvel card art. He was doing some gaming work. And the idea of having a painting was something I never thought of um, to, to make this kind of vision come to life. You know, I, yeah. I thought it would just be an artist drawing it. Uh, and Mark, um, Miles did such a, a great job here um, with um, not only. Um, the leather and the shadow under under uh, under the hat. But if you look at the sky, uh, the sky kind of rep represents the Rorschach patterns in his face. Uh, right. And I didn't ask for this. He just this is what he did as a as a great artist. And if yeah. you look on the glove, there's a little bit of blood on the glove. Right. Um, um, and the leather just shines. Um, and it's my hometown. Um, and, uh, I, I thought Jackie Her Earl Haley was, uh, the most perfectly cast, um, uh, role in, you know, sci-fi in the last 20 years. I, he was just fantastic as Rorschach. I was so excited. I, I love what, um, that movie brought to life. I love what Zack Snyder did with that movie. I love the fact that it changed at the end because I thought the squid at the end of the movie would have been silly on film. Um, 
And it just made me love Watchmen all the more, all the more. And I was just so glad to get this done uh, and find an artist who could just create that darkness and that, um, that broodiness, uh, but still make it intrinsic to, to my hometown. Yeah. And uh, do you know, um, do you remember if this was, does he work in oils typically? It's oils. Yeah, it's an oil. It is oil? Okay. Yeah. There you go, Rich. Yeah. And, um, you know, Miles does some great commission work. He's he's still available. Um, you, I think it's mileswall.com. Okay. Um, if you want to find him. Um, he, uh, he auctioned off a real nice piece, uh, Dr. Doom, about three weeks ago on Nick's show. Um, All right. Uh, to, for, for to, to raise some money for for a member in the community and then uh, uh, he did he did some really nice uh, commission work he did a spider-man for uh, for oax as well uh, but I love this piece and I had it's an eight by ten but if you can see it cut back to me uh, oh yeah sure yeah I'll show you guys over my shoulder I had it blown up it's right there I had it blown up on canvas back there you guys can see it yeah Nice. Um, so I had, had a, a giant blow up of it. Um, so uh, that was my first real commission piece. I should say real. It was my first commission piece. First time I had a commission done. Really um, recent too. So yeah, yeah, I was yeah. thrilled. Yeah, I had never done a commission. I had nothing, nothing ever really jumped out at me. I bought a commission piece, but I never had one done for me, right. and that was the first, and I, I couldn't be happier. Oh, excellent. Yeah. yeah. Always glad to hear that because I, I, you know, I've heard so many, and I still hear so many horror stories about commissions. You know, so many, so many of them go wrong. So it's nice to hear when somebody, especially on their first attempt, yeah, it turns out really, you know, great, and you, you're really super happy with it. That's always well, great to hear the story. You know, I, I gave Miles a choice. I, it was either that or Golden Age Green Lantern because I wanted to see what those colors would be like, and I asked him what he would prefer. Uh, and he, he kind of was leaning towards uh, Rorschach. And I felt there's always a little advantage when you can find something that the artist wants to do. Um, yeah. Commission. Sure. So that, that's yeah. what tipped the scales that way. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, beautiful. All right. So that's excellent. Um, from there, uh, why don't we go to the next piece? And uh, the next piece is um, not coincidentally lined up to be more commissions and uh the only thing is is i don't recall if you got them done or if you were you purchased them this way already yeah yeah i, I, I purchased i know which one you're, you're going to show um yeah. they're after show two i figured since i don't have the color you know there's no color versions like i normally right do, right right i figured at the same artist and I might as well put two commissions we can show more art that way yeah two pieces on one on one slide here we go everybody yeah so um i i, I you I, for the longest time kevin mcguire uh was like one of my last favorite artists oh really yeah until michael turner came along and i think michael turner was like my last favorite new artist oh. um and then guys like fernando Passarin, um <laughs> you know is, nice. is on my radar but i just love everything about when um uh, Mateus and Giffen and McGuire came back to Justice League. As I, as you guys know, as I showed, I was a huge Justice League fan, um, and you know I followed Justice League, you know all those Dick Dillon years, yeah. and um, but it ended with the Detroit Justice League. You DC fans know, um, but the break dancer and Jerry Conway right. doing, and it, it, it was just oh god, you know awful, awful, it was, it, yeah. Uh, and even Jerry Conway has admitted he 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 blew that one. Um, um, so I, I just had a bad taste in my mouth. And then you know, what was the summer of '87? You know, you you can't. I had those dark brooding Watchmen comics, and you had uh, Dark Knight Returns, and then this goofy comic of the Justice League, which wasn't as goofy as people think it was. There was some really serious good writing in there, but I did. Where the hell did Kevin McGuire come from, right? And it took four or five issues for his his anatomy to really come through but his mm -hmm. facial expressions because that was the whole core of that story being yeah. able to tell the story through pa facial expressions um i i just loved it and you know there's a whole podcast 
devoted to that run of, of Justice League, Justice League International, Justice League Gear, everything that DeMatteis and, and Giffen worked on. You know, for a while, you know, it was McGuire, and then of course Adam Hughes took over for a while. Um, but but this this particular commission, um, yeah, I bought this from somebody on on CAF. And okay. again, I asked. No, he had this up for sale um at Comic Art Live and it didn't sell. And I came back and offered him a little less and he agreed to sell it. Um and okay. what I don't like is what you won't see in any of my art is villains like yeah. beating up on heroes. There was right. a really cool Perez page. It was a cover to Brave and the Bold recently, and it was Ultraman having a rock, and he was going to crush Superman with it. And it, it went really affordable, but I didn't want to spend the money because I don't want to see one of my heroes get bested by a villain. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just don't want to see that, or I'm not going to spend money on that. I may, may call it goofy. This is the opposite, right? This is Batman taking the Joker and, and basically, you know, being that one-punch badass Batman from uh, from 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 that Justice League brouhaha era, yeah, and, and so that's yeah, the left side, right. yeah. So and in Kevin McGuire at shows he sells these little headshots, and I picked it up. I, I knew I wanted to have it. And I asked him why is why is Batman smiling? He goes, I don't know. Maybe he had an edible. So I had him write that down and then yeah. send it over to me. Um, <laughs> and it's just a nice juxtaposition: a brooding Batman and a smiling Batman. Yeah, yeah, I'm the, for sure. I'm the same guy. Yeah, for sure. No, it's a lot of fun. Really, a lot of fun. Out of curiosity, do you know what he used for the the color um, on the headshot? No, I don't. But you know, and but what I did. Speaking of color, I tried to get a hold of McGuire through his website because I wanted to send him this and have him color it the same oh. way because I liked the way he colored it. I would never have anybody else color it. Um, right. Uh, but he didn't respond. So I, I don't know. I think it's markers. Okay. I believe it's just markers. But I love the way he does that flat kind of coloring on his stuff. Wow. FYI, I would still leave the, the, the one with the Joker uncolored. Yeah. Okay. Well, just, again. Just, just me. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't like to color any original ink line art. I don't. Yeah. I, I get that. I, I've made a mistake on something, by the way. Um, I had um, somebody color a Mike Grell Green Lantern. Uh, commission that I bought, and that was a huge mistake. Again, wow. a, rook, a rookie collector. But was it not even Mike Grell coloring? No, it was somebody else. Yeah. It was it was a, it was a well known colorist. Yeah, yeah. It did not turn out well. I let me get. It. Let me let me. Can I take? No, one don't. Because I won't. I won't. I won't. I won't. You won't admit it. to it. Okay. No, because he did some great work in the past. He was a good okay. colorist. But okay. I, I, it was my mistake. It wasn't his. He was just doing what I paid him to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That looks like marker on Batman's face. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I think it is. Batman's baked, indeed. Yeah. Looks, looks like Copics. Yeah, it looks like some kind of marker for sure. Bat gummies. Bat gummies. Yeah. Marcus only gets his Bob Kane colored. Nice. <laughs> All original Bob Kane's. He could have have his daughter colored. Yeah. Cool. All right. So with that, let us move on, everyone, shall we? Next piece tonight is. Thanks everybody for hanging out this late. I didn't. I don't think I've ever had an audience this long. <laughs> yeah, they're used to it. They're used to it. They know I always go at least three hours, so they're they're right. used to it. <laughs> but yeah, Teen Titans twenty three classic era, beautiful yeah. with uh, Commander. Yeah, and, yeah. Well, no, that's that's Blackfire. Oh yeah, but that's oh, her, no, you're, her, you're right. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, Commander. Yeah, that's her, her, her real, her right. real. Yeah, no, you get you had me. You're right. You're right. Yeah. So. I remember reading this issue um, on on a on the back of a bus. I would go. I lived on the west side of Chicago, and the only good comic shop was way up on the north side. Um, that was the Joe Sarno's Comic Kingdom. So I'd have to take an Addison bus all the way down to Pulaski. I get off the Pulaski bus this is before I could drive, and I have to take Pulaski all the way up to Lawrence. Um, and I remember buying this this issue. Um, and I, I was just captivated, captivated by these comics. And, you know, every time uh, a Titans issue came out in this era, it was like a major movie release. That's how excited. And if you're a Titans fan, you know what I'm talking about. Um, yeah. And I remember reading this issue on the back of the bus and totally blowing by my stop. 
um, <laughs> and 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 having get off the bus and and turn around. And I kept reading it, and I missed the stop going the other way. <laughs> you, you know, only by one stop. But maybe I have a, an attention problem. I don't know. But um, that's what this this whole run. This was the first, you know, like deep story arc in 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 the Titans. This was before the Judas contract. Um, this this was the first, and this, it was taking you out in the space, and it was giving you the story of one of the new Titans, and and you know this broke out into the Omega Men, if you remember. Um, but um, I got this page because I had that set of Titan statues behind me, and I needed a page with all the Titans in it. Right. Um, and the only one that isn't in this page is, of course, Starfire, but his but her sister is, so it kind of yeah. takes place. <laughs> um, and it's the goofy dialogue from from Changeling, which is fun. Um, yeah. And uh, you know Donna's beautiful. Uh, you know she got more beautiful as as George you know matured with his yeah. art, um, yeah, but sure. she looks great. And uh, I, I, yeah, I just, this represents, you know, when you remember buying a comic and you get a piece of art from it, um, you know, it means a lot. I mean, this story arc ended with that beautiful painted cover of Teen Titans Annual number one. Oh, um, yeah. And I, I think, yeah, I think Michael has that, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you're, but, making, uh, you're, making me, you're making me want to go uh, back and reread issue one to 50. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I mean, certainly one through, yeah, through the Judas contract and a couple of issues after. I mean, I love them. Um, yeah. And, you know, they, and if you read, if you listen to um, Marv Wolfman talk about the Titans, he wasn't necessarily shooting for the X Men, a DC version of X Men. He was shooting for an X, a DC version of the Fantastic oh, Four. Oh, yeah. He wanted yeah. a family. Where they Family, squabbled, yeah. yeah. So this yeah. was more his take on Fantastic Four than it was actually X Men. It just happened to be teenage powered heroes at the time. Yeah. But um, I wanted to say here, where is it? Uh, Waiting to exhale. Yeah, Rich, good. Yeah, that was that was a funny one. Um, Rich, the one that I just took off the comment here. How do you pronounce Commander with the accent? What accent? I don't know what you mean by that. It's 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 an apostrophe. It's a it's a an apostrophe after the D, you know, so it replaces, I guess, the E, and that's it. There's no accent. It's just it's an apostrophe. So there you go for that. And what were okay? They were firing at all cylinders at this point, says Rich. That's true. Um, she lives on the hill. I missed that one. I'm not sure what you're referring to, CJ. Sorry, it went over my head. Um, Karen says I love space pages. I think most of us. In, in, in comics, love space pages. They're always awesome. And uh, Marcus, what are you saying now? I want to read to 50 because I love Terry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, that's that not scruffy, good. That. Terry Long's scruffy beard. Oh, oh, Terry Long God. was the luckiest guy in comics. Oh, God. Terry Long God. was just way out over his skis. Uh okay, Rich. Okay, I didn't know you were joking. I, you know your 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 humor didn't come through on that. What can I say? But uh, Commander, eh? <laughs> eh. Uh, bird nest hair. Yeah, but no, you're you're um you're absolutely right. Uh, we've had this discussion on on my uh, one of my shows before, Tom, about yeah. uh, Terry and how much we hated Terry, or certainly how much I hated Terry, <laughs> and how lucky that character was. Like. What, what, yeah. What? Do, you, what? do you remember There's the no issue there. where Donna's taking a shower and it's like, yeah, it's Terry Long. Yeah. There's, no way. There's no way that happens in real life. I know. You know, unless unless Terry had been like a multi, whatever, like a billionaire kind, whatever, then that Maybe. happens in real life. Otherwise, yeah. that's not happening. And Terry, I don't remember. What was he, a writer? Whatever he was, journalist or something? I can't remember. No, I don't know. I don't he, remember he did not so yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the fakest uh, relationship I've ever seen. Yeah. Uh, unrealistic, uh, I guess we could say. Um, Rich was more of a Sarah Sims fan. Yes, yeah, yes, that's better. But okay, let us go on, everyone. Let us go on to and thank you, everybody, uh, for those of you tuning in late. I appreciate it. Thanks for uh, dropping in. I hope you're enjoying the uh, the show and tell. 
we have pretty much like the high for the evening right now, interestingly enough. And it keeps fluctuating, but uh, that's awesome. Thank you, all of you. Um, so from there, why don't we go to the next piece? And for that, um, we go from Team Titans to Weird yeah, just, War Tales. And I just picked this up after OAX, after chatting a little bit with uh, Jose. Um, this popped up on Heritage. Um, I I got the page not necessarily because it was Jose. Again, and here's another master director, right? Yes. You don't really get to, you don't really get to see the anatomy stuff that he does. But as far as moving the camera around and telling the story, um, he does a, a, a really good job of telling the story here. This particular story is about a U.S. Uh, sergeant who um, his um, he's he's has a uh, it's a paratroop regiment and one of the paratroopers is afraid to jump out of a plane and he he tells the guy um you're just a you know he gives him crap for being uh, afraid and kind of pushes him out uh to jump and then he jumps well he lands in german territory and he fakes that he's dead in order to escape the the nazi regiment there it's a quick story it's like six or eight pages Right. But in the end, in the end, he encounters a bunch of vampires, and he's you know scared out of his mind. So you know, you know, at the beginning of the eight-page story or six-page story, he's he's dissing on some private because he's afraid to jump, and then you see at the end, he's you know, uh, you know, dies in fear himself. Um, but but I I just love the fact that um, I happen to be a World War II buff a little bit, and I visited. Um, uh, the Normandy beaches a couple times uh, on while well, I was on business travel, including the town of St. Marigles. And St. Marigles is a portrait in the movie uh, The Longest Day. And then the story Red Buttons gets um, one of the soldiers, it's Red Buttons, the actor uh, comedian yeah. from the 50s, 60s. He gets caught on a steeple and he goes deaf because they're banging the bells because the Germans are, are you know, the invasion is coming, uh, D-Day invasion. And he goes deaf. And I have a picture of myself in, in that little town with the church. And in fact, I posted it as part of, of this, this posting uh, in the gallery. But this reminded me of my trip to St. Mary Lee's, and it was by one of my favorite artists. Very and it's, cool. you know, it's 70, yeah. 1975. So it's, it's yeah. you know. It's early, early yeah. uh, Garcia Lopez. Very, yeah, very early Garcia Lopez. Yeah. Yeah. And just so you know, um, even though I did include Tom's photo of him and Wool at OAX. I purposely did not want to include um, his photo that he's referring to when he went overseas. Uh, um, that you know, at, at, in the same city that he's um, same Eric Lee. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, because simply so that I, you guys, if you want to see it, you have a reason to use the link down below in the description. Um, Tom's. The gallery is linked there, as I always uh, do for everyone. So just click it and, uh, yeah, check it out for yourselves and peruse this gallery. Leave them some comments if you want, you know. There you go. Okay. Excellent. Yeah, no, that's a pretty that's a pretty fun, uh, uh, fun pickup uh, because it's, you know, you're so used to seeing superheroes usually uh, from Garcia Lopez, but to see something so early and it being a war comic, not something yeah. you're, 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 you know, you, you, you yeah, think Yeah, something about. different. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, a number one Marvel fan says he used to get scared reading those uh, weird war tales. Yeah, Always had creepy. show endings, you know? Yeah, there's some good stuff in there. Yeah, Rich says some artists can only draw superhero stories well. Some draw westerns or love stories, but Jose can draw anything. Yeah, everything. Right, yeah. I mean, I didn't really get much into Jonah Hex until I realized oh. some of it, it was written, drawn by Jose, and then I, oh. I went back and started reading the Jonah Hex. I love Jonah Hex, yeah. Um, okay, excellent. So very, very nice. Let us continue, everyone. And from that Garcia Lopez page, let us jump into a title for which Tom spoke of earlier for different reasons. But let's take a look at this. Mm. DC presents number twenty-five. So right around that same. That's why I own numbering it. era. <laughs> that, this is that's why I own it. Yeah. Um, 
And I keep, I tell myself that if this had been on the wall and the Jim Starlin had been, or the Jim Starlin piece on the, uh, was on the wall, I, I prop, I might've even bought this instead. I don't know what I, you know, my 12 or 13 year old brain was doing, but, um, this is really nice. And I believe it was Marcus who pointed out when I posted this page, how rare these split covers are. Um, and um, I went back and realized there weren't a lot of split covers, um, yeah. you know, from, from this era. Um, Ross Andrew um, and um, his, his, you know, he does a really good job with, with super, the, the faces. You know, he, he has this kind of confident look about the way he drew Superman. Mm -hmm. um, his own distinct style and um this this is um i mean it's a great cover in and of itself but this is i own this one because i lost 28 um right and um i'm i'm okay with it um it's a it's a great it's a it's a great story too it's the first it's also the first issue where that dc comics presents had those whatever happened to backup stories so there's a lot going on on this cover that i really like yeah. um and uh you know it's 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 pete ross's son whose soul is um you know being fought all over uh, with regards to you know his future uh self is going to prevent a war in in the future i forget exactly what it was um right. but it, 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 there was some heritage superman heritage story that went back to pete ross and john ross the pete ross son john ross so um you know this i the way i have my comic art displayed in my my layer here is they're on shelves and I rotate when I get bored looking at them. I just put one in front of the other, but this one is always up front. Oh, that's cool. And, yeah. uh, I guess I don't need to mention it, but I, I always can't help myself, but thank God we can look at the original because of that hideous coloring that hides all yeah, the line cool. art, uh, yeah, especially cool. on the right side of the cover. It's like, yeah. what? What is happening there with those two characters? You can't. Yeah, I, I mean, Phantom Strangers, all the uh, detail in, in his costume just disappears. Yeah, um, the whole thing. The whole thing became a silhouette, you know. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you're absolutely right. It's, I'm glad you pointed that out. Wow, that is just uh, yeah, pretty crazy. But yeah, great, great cover. Love that one. Very nice. All right. So from there, we're gonna go to. Um, a piece by uh, George Perez, everybody. Big surprise. Who? Who? <laughs> Gonna show another one. And uh, this is actually um, from the project that George himself, I personally, I like it a lot, but I don't agree. I'm not of the same opinion. George, it's George's favorite. George said that that was the stuff he, he said was his most best. proud of yeah 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 he told me that yeah he told me yeah. that when i met him yeah yeah, and yeah. he, he was most proud of his work also yeah 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 uh, yeah let's take a look everyone great page by the way especially as a superman fan great well, page yeah and you know what you what you you would think you'd want from this run is a, a page with both the marvel and dc characters and, on yeah there. Yeah, I, you but, know what? Arlo? I was I was thinking about that as I was making the slide, and I said to myself, you know, it's interesting that Tom, you know, he, he got a he, you got a page that is missing literally every Avenger. Yeah, but then I, but then I said, but wait a second, Tom is a DC guy yeah. all the way. So if you're really gonna want to have a page from it, maybe for a guy like you, maybe you know, maybe this is. A better way to go with all JLA characters. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe. Well, I mean, this was until I got the page from Nick, the JLA Avengers page. This was my George Perez. I'm sorry, I got to say his name right. I tried to do that. George Perez. Yes. Um, this was my George Perez um, event, uh, JLA page, right? Until I got the yeah. one from Nick, and um, it's no slouch, man. Um, and it, you know, if you look at the maturity of his art from 1980 to, to this particular era on this page. Again, this is one of the great pages because George inked it. Right. Um, and, you know, um, it's his facial expressions. We talked about Kevin McGuire. George was no slouch with fa facial expressions, especially in those Titans comics, right? Um, he, he nailed his, his Wonder Woman, his Aquaman, they always look the same. 
issues and years apart. He just he nailed that. Um, and you look at the detail uh, on the upper left panel, then you've got, you know, all all the uh, Justice League members. The only thing that bothers me, of course, is that it's Kyle Rayner. It's not Hal Jordan. Um, yeah. But that was the Green Lantern at the time. Uh, right. So we, we can't do anything about it. Uh, but yeah, there's just so much to love about this this particular page. Um, and um, it, it and George did say, and I asked him, you know, what you you know, what are you most proud of? And he that, you know, he was proud of this. this. He felt this was his best work. But he wanted to do this thing for how many years, right? Oh yeah. Um, I mean, this 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 was his his his. Wh whereas Crisis might have been his magnum opus, this this was his love letter. Um. So yeah, I'm yeah. I'm yeah. This is another one that'll go with me, you know. Be passed down to my kids. Yeah, yeah. I I have the indignity of, uh, of of having to say that I never got a chance to even read that. I never got my hands on a copy of that. And uh, since they don't seem to want to put it back in print, even though even now, even now, where Marvel and DC both have just announced that they are putting out two different omnibuses of all yeah. those. All those crossovers they did from like I don't know the nineties or I don't know. I how read far, that, but they're doing these two omnibuses. And they're putting all these stories together, but they're not going to be doing the JLA Avengers. Like why? That's not. That's what I hate. This industry I, I, I don't have an answer. Um, yeah. If you really want to read them, you can find them the digital versions online. I mean, oh no, I love, like right. I, and and oh, honestly, same. I do. I do have to go digital. I got no more room for paperbacks, trade yeah. paperbacks. I do. I have to go. I just, I'm so old school. I can never get around to like doing the, the research needed to figure out what kind of a player or reader that I need to buy or whatever, you know, and I, yeah, but I'm going to do I, it. I, I don't think the JLA Avengers story, I know George loved it. I don't think the story was that great. That great. Yeah. You know, it, it was serviceable. Um, yeah. You know, it, it provided a platform for great art is what it did. Oh no. Yeah. 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 Sure. sure. Yeah. That's, that's, I was always a, a more of an art guy than a story guy anyways, you know? So it was one of those things where I'd be okay. I'd be okay if the story turns out to be not great um, when the art's great, you know? So I'm- What is I'm Rich really saying great. about the um, his Daily Avengers page? So I used to own a two page splash from the first issue of JLA Avengers and Green Lantern was originally drawn as Hal Jordan and the costume was changed on the page to Kyle Rayner's costume. So, Rich, did you you have the Hell Jordan versions of those pages? Now we got to wait ten seconds, right? Yeah. Well, on 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 his two page splash, I he's mean, saying that the Green Lantern well, on it was drawn as Hal Jordan. Hmm. Um, um, but but I'd, but, I'd, but I'd love to see images of that. I don't. Yeah, think, I don't think so. I knew that. I thought it would, Hal Jordan was on those pages from the. Yeah, but don't the, forget. My, I think he's talking about my, from the nineteen eighty three. Those pencil yes. pages, right? Yeah. Were not yeah. Okay. Yeah. That. Yes. He's right. If you had two of those pages, Rich, I'm sorry you don't have them anymore, because those those original 22 pages or whatever they were. There. Yeah, clarify. Clarify that for us, if you can, yeah. Rich. You're talking about the original penciled ones from that he was doing in the early 80s. That's what I assume you're talking about. Um, but then again, those early ones weren't used for this. For this later one, right? They never used any of that old. No, art. they didn't. I, I, right. They didn't use oh, any yeah. of it. No, you can't be talking about then, because why would they change that old art to Kyle Rayner, right? Right. So no, that means he's talking about. Okay, yeah. So he's clarifying. No, the later series it had held. They had, so they had. Really? He had still drawn him as Hal Jordan for some reason. Uh, I didn't know that. I don't think I knew that. You know, I know that Hal Jordan yeah. wasn't in Crisis, which I think is a terrible oversight. But that's that's another that's another story. Marcus said something about Spencer was pricing those pages higher from the start. Marcus, yeah. are you saying with the ones with DC and Marvel characters in the same page? I think it's, I think that's what he's saying. Yeah, he'll let us know. Um, uh, who made a comment about Jim Shooter? Oh, uh, that's the one I just put up. Uh, that yeah. Was, uh, but, George was so know, upset when Shooter put the kibosh on the first one. He was, but in years later, if you read the later interviews with George, he realized it wasn't ju just Jim Shooter. There were other, he actually kind of pulled back on 
um, his his uh, maligning Shooter over over that. Um, I mean, Shooter definitely pulled rank and used contract terms to um, to, um, stop the project. And he and Shooter got really pissed when he found out that um, George was already drawing um, based on the plot without the script being approved by himself. So that's why he put the gosh on. It was a big Jim Shooter ego, from my understanding. He was more pissed that the pages were drawn. And mm. he just, yeah. Um, but hey, you know what? Whatever it was, we weren't there. And and we eventually got the story. So that's that, that's uh, that's that's where what we should focus on. Yeah, uh, I see what he's Mark confirming. Yeah, he's confirming you meant the, the pages of both teams, which, oh, yeah. you, you know, makes I, sense. I, that's what I would have done as well. So that makes sense, of course. Yeah. Right. The title. The title is JLA Avengers. So you want some of both. You want them. You know, yeah. Most people will. You're gonna. They're gonna cost more. Of course. It makes total. Yeah. Sense. I mean, the, the the most prized pages in those are the ones where Batman are, is fighting Captain America. Um, that those are those are the ones I think the highest priced in the whole the yeah. whole lot that I've seen. Yeah. So. Shooter ego? No, eh, I don't want to get into that. But I love the shooter era Marvel. He did great stuff at Marvel. A lot of the stuff that I thought was fun at Marvel, is because of Jim Shooter. So I'm a big I, fan. yeah. I, I I I remember reading about you know he had he had a single vision um, and it worked. You know, very singular vision and yeah, uh, he did a lot of great stuff. Look, yeah. he 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 pissed off a lot of creators at the same time, but. Just as you will find many creators that hate him, there was tons of people he was great to that will will revere him. So I mean, he made a lot of careers, right? There's there's certain characters in the players in the in the comic world that made a lot of careers. Jim Shooter made a lot of careers. Terry Austin made a lot of careers. Um, so you you know, pros or cons, they did something right for sure, for sure. All right. Um, thanks everybody for hanging in. We're almost done actually with the uh, show and tell. We'll get a, a few pieces. Um, so let us continue and get on to the next one. And it's less than a handful to go, and we're we're done. So this next piece is one of my favorite characters. We've seen him again uh, that earlier tonight uh, more than once, and we'll show him again. And it's by an artist who Tom has spoken of earlier. Check it out. So this, I bought Interesting this. Interesting story. Yeah, and I bought this at the top of the pandemic, um, right? I think it was off of eBay. It was like May of 2020. And this guy was selling pages. He, did, he was out of work. And uh, he, he listed at a certain price, and it was too high. And I came back and said, listen, I'll give you this for it. He's like, wow, this, I need the money. So, yeah. So I was lucky to get this. Now, I knew when I bought it, it wasn't the actual um, printed cover. And I had a chance to speak to Howard about this. Well, uh, well, hold on, Tom. Hold on. To be fair, I mean, it is the actual printed cover, isn't it? But the only change being the Superman, isn't it? I, I thought it was originally changed in Photoshop. Uh, oh, okay. Howard said it. He redrew it because, and it, he couldn't remember if somebody in editorial asked him to redraw it. It was okay. drawn with the intent it was going to be the final cover. Um, it wasn't like a prelim or anything. Um, okay. Good night, Karen. And um, and then it was redrawn, so you could see there are. It's very close. Um, and I knew this when I picked it up. It wasn't the original. Um, and Howard said he doesn't even know if the original still exists. Um, but I, I just love it because it is the golden age, you know, Superman with the triangle S. Um, and Howard didn't do a lot of superhero covers. Um, and he, if he did them, he did them so re reluctantly. And he'll tell you how much he hated doing superheroes, right? Um, yeah. but, but his style kind of fits that genre of of golden age um and it also reminded me very much um, and we'll go back to that darn dc comics presents 28 cover which has mongo holding superman in his hand right and, right. and it kind of reminded me of that so um 
again, it's a Howard Chaikin cover of Superman. And um, it may have not been published exactly at this, but I just, I think it's great. I was thinking about selling it for a while, but um, as I, you know, I often do. Um, but this one I, I, I've decided to keep um, because it's so rare to have Howard do a, uh, a superhero cover. Yeah, yeah, for sure. No, it's it's nice, and um, what I what I liked about it is, uh, as as Rick had mentioned, um, the old school style. It looks it looks you know with the uh, with the logo and the the, the number yeah. you know. Uh, yeah. It really it really made they really made it look like a golden age book, which which is yeah. Awesome. Let me just show you what I did. Sorry, if I leave the frame here, but so when I had it framed. Oh yeah, I had, cool. I had oops, sorry here. I had oh, the overlay done. You got the overlay. Over. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did you do it yourself or did you get somebody to do it? I did that myself. I was able to figure it out in Photoshop. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Myself. Yeah. All right. Yeah, nice. It looks nicer when it's complete that way. If you're gonna yeah. if you're gonna put it up like that, yeah, it's nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, very cool. No, it's very, very, very nice. So I guess I guess then if, if even um if even Howard had said, Oh yeah, I don't know where the other one is, that means there literally are two boards. He just Redrew. He must have redrawn almost identically with some changes on another. Some board. changes, yeah. I don't know. You know, edit some editorial change, or maybe he didn't like it. He couldn't remember if it was an editorial change. Yeah, vintage fonts. Yeah, he couldn't remember if it was editorial or it was his decision. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Well, who knows? Maybe the other one. Will, if there's another one there, it will pop up. Uh, maybe. Pop yeah, up. I haven't. Yeah, I haven't seen it, but I looked on Heritage. I looked on Cap. Yeah. Very nice. All right, everybody, let us move on. And for that, we go to the next one. Um, Tom's favorite character and a page he mentioned at the top of the show wanted to save one of the best for last. So that's why it is this piece. So um, I just loved those Green Lantern covers that Gil Kane did over the years. Yeah, uh, And every cover was fun and goofy and happy and um there was just something about gil kane's covers on those green lanterns and um gil kane wasn't an artist i immediately liked because my green lantern was introduction was mike grell and you know yeah. going back and looking at gil kane after seeing mike grell and terry austin and then neil adams in there it, it's it's a big change but as i got into the green lantern mythos um, I really started to appreciate those older stories, the Gardner Fox stories that, you know, were kind of the staple of, 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 you know, Gil Kane's run. And, um, I had been looking for a page from the year I was born, 1967, and couldn't find one. Although I know a collector now who has one and is, might be willing to sell it. But this page was interesting to me because I'm a big fan of that first, what they call crisis point five right which was ellen scott i think it was green lantern what was it i have recreation um but it was ellen scott and green lantern going at each other it was kind of the story of um the precursor to the crisis so this this page happened to have ellen scott and hal jordan on it and it has that beautiful yeah. panel up at the left and that's before zipatone man so that's all pen and ink up there um where uh you've got gil kane uh, I'm sorry, but Hell Jordan, Gil Kane drawing Hell Jordan going between Earth One and Earth Two, uh, looking for um, Alan Scott. Yeah. And uh, even though it's just a side profile, to have a Gil Kane draw those two Green Lanterns is just is just really cool. And um, as time has gone on, I've really learned to enjoy Gil Kane's art. Um, again, it took it took me a while. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy to hear yeah. that, Tom. I, I've always been a, a huge fan of his work. So yeah, um, but yeah, now I've got you know I've got Green Lantern going all the way back to the number forty. I think. Okay. Um, the only cool. reason I don't have any of them earlier is because they're just too darn expensive. In fact, I just picked up. There, you can switch over to me. I just picked up a couple uh, Green Lantern issues. Oh. Just the other day. Yeah, I just picked up. Couple of Gil, you come the wrong way. Couple of Gil Kane issues just the other day. I just got them in the mail. So you're still buying? You still collect comics as well? Yeah, yeah. When I find the ones that I want, I have a list of you know issues I'm trying to fill out. 
Okay. You know, like a want yeah. list, very specific want list. Yeah. Very specific, you know, but I, the new comics, I don't even know what's going on with new comics. Yeah. Yeah, I have no idea. Yeah, check in yeah. Dealer and Game. That is right. Yeah. Right, Rick Yeah. Very and their art is similar, but they're also very different. It's, it's hard, you know, kind yeah. of this block. They're, they're very similar styles, but also very distinct. Yeah. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, and and what what Rick had said, he had mentioned, you know, has both lanterns on it. Man, I remember, I remember there was a time like in the eighties, um, in comics, like they always made a big deal about like if if you bought like um, uh, any crossover, like it was such a big deal, like it was it was considered key. Any comic that had like the Golden Age. Like Justice League and Justice Society of America characters crossing over with each other, you know. Good night, Lee. Um. Oh, gotta leave. Gotta eat dinner and night all. Have a good night, Lee. Thank you for dropping in and yeah, hanging yeah. out. Appreciate Thanks, it. Lee. Well, I as as much as I liked Crisis, it was a problem that to me didn't need to be solved. I knew Earth One, Earth Two, really? Earth X. Earth, I didn't think it needed to be solved. Really? I, wow. I did not. I did. I, I I had no problem with keeping the earth straight. Um, I, to me, it was simple to understand. And you know, as proof, they went back and blew the whole multiverse back out, right? Um, but but I got it. I totally understood it. And and remember, you know, Earth, the Earth One, Earth Two that Julie Schwartz created was responsible for the Silver Age of comics. It was responsible for bringing back. Um, comics from the dead um which which julie schwartz basically did right if you remember um it was julie schwartz who brought those characters back as flash and green lantern i, I um, get it i get it yeah. but here's the thing here's the thing tom coming from one of millions of at the time in the 80s was my time early 80s you know marvel guys right yeah what so so okay i only had very limited money um Marvel attracted me more than DC, as it did to most people. Um, but of course, having been familiar with certain DC characters through Super Friends, you know, things like that, mm -hmm. uh, Saturday morning cartoons, I still wanted to read some DC, certainly, right? Um, but one thing that always threw me off and, and like piss, pissed me off was as soon as I'd be reading some story and they're talking about Earth 1, Earth 2, Earth S, Earth this and that. I was like, what? I don't like, I'm out. I am so out yeah, on that. I, know. Like, I don't like alternate realities. I just want one version of every character. That's it. I, I, you know, if you were from the golden age, stay in the golden age, whatever. And that's it. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I hated it. So I, I was like, oh, crisis. Cause I didn't understand it. Like, I was like, what? All these different earths. And so they told me, oh, crisis is going to try to get rid of everything to make it one earth. One universe essentially with one Earth. To me, that just seemed like okay. This will probably yeah. make a lot more sense to Marvel fans who kind of don't get DC. So I thought it was a great idea. Now, all these years later, it's been retconned out of existence. I know it, it, why. Yeah, redone and yeah. redone, and whatever. But I, yeah, I would really like to be in the room when DC made makes those decisions and say, Scott, yeah, you know, yeah, what, I know. You know just stop I know. screwing around. But anyway. I know, but I got to tell you, for me, it was so epic. To this day, it's still my favorite sort of superhero epic size story with tons of, you know, characters in it. Um, yeah, everything about it, just I remember, it just felt so epic as it was happening. And we are now going to talk about... That'll segue perfectly because I see what you did there. I see what you did there. I, I see, I <laughs> we we are going to segue and, and let's talk about this a bit. We'll continue talking about it after we talk about this particular page. Why don't we? Yeah, okay? yeah. Uh, it, it, it's it's his magnum opus. Um, yeah, and um, uh, I got this because I lost out on a page from a dealer. Um, this particular dealer. Um, he's broken my heart more than girls in high school have because every time he does his art drop and I go to see a page that I want, I, I send him a text. It's like, nope, already gone. Son of a, 
Um, and, and that was the case. There was a, there was a, a, a Perez JLA um, page. It was a JSA JLA crossover. Um, and I missed it by about a minute. Um, and about four days later, that dealer called me. It was Glenn. And he said, um, I've got a crisis page. And um, um, I want to let you know, it's, 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 I'm going to put it up soon. And just, you know, I just wanted to be on your radar. Um, and he did the art drop and my radar was up and um, I grabbed it. And I'm very appreciative of, of Glenn of, of being empathetic to me, missing out by a minute on that. I think it was JLA 192. It was one of, it was the last JLA JSA crossover. So I, right. I picked this up, right? And um, it was a little bit more because it is from uh, the, the magnum opus. Um, and um, as much as I, and by the way, my opinion on the, you know, the earth's not needing to merge. It didn't really form until several years after because I too, like you, was excited about where this was going. Mm -hmm. um, but the story, again, the story, it's better than say JLA Avengers. Um, but again, the story here was a platform for great art. This, this series, I think went on about two issues too long. Um, um, but I, I still read it to this day. I, I have the novelization by Marv Wolfman, and Bethany, oh, yeah. uh, which I thought the no novelization was really helpful to understand the story. Um, and I'm just so proud to own, uh, you know, a page from the, you know, which is regarded what, I mean, this was the beginning of the Bronze Age, I think, you know, this kicked off a, or the Copper Age, I think they say this kicked off the Copper Age, whatever that was. Yeah. Uh, but you look at the page. I don't, yeah. I don't fall I, for all those stupid, stupid yeah. terms comic book guys come up with. They make no sense, whatever. But anyways, yeah. what, but it's, but it's got Dr. Faden, and this happens to be a page where Wildcat it's crippled. Yes. Yes. You know? See, that's the thing. So this is, this is, if I may, if I may interject uh, Tom yeah. for a, a moment here. Um, so this is part of the reason I keep saying why for me, it felt so damn epic. Okay. Like yeah. I was familiar with the major DC heroes. Okay. But I only had a very passing familiarity with all the other ones. So for, for example, um, I knew nothing really about JSA, except I recognized the characters. I knew who the JSA characters were, you know, but I'd never read them or anything. But I, I, this page, like, like so many other pages in this series, this page is burned and just seared into my memory. Um, yeah. And it's because you... that, but that bottom tier, okay. That bottom tier of vertical uh, panels of five vertical panels. I mean, I still, to this day, I've never forgotten how, Wildcat's there, and and in my head, as I'm reading, I'm thinking, oh yeah, Wildcat, that's that uh, that character from the Golden Age Justice League, uh, Justice Society character, you know. Knew nothing about him though, and like, oh, that's so cool, you know. It's like he's basically got no powers other than he's a boxer. Um, that's all I knew about him. And look at that, you know, they're showing they're showing him doing regular hum human things. You know, he's saving a little girl, right? And two panels later. He's right, the, the the electricity hits him, and he gets crippled, as you said. And then I believe it's is it the next page where Monel is it Monel who looks at him with yeah. his three uh, D yeah. whatever see three D vision or whatever you call that the see through uh, yeah X ray vision right? And he says, you know, he'll never walk again. It, it was so oh my god, every panel hit me. Yeah. Like, oh, and and like I said, I. I knew nothing about Wildcat. Like he didn't mean anything to me, but that happening to him, it meant yeah. something. So that's yeah, what it, I it, it just yeah. the whole thing made me care, even though I didn't have a lot of familiarity with these co uh, characters. You know? Yeah, I mean, I mean, this really turned things around for DC too. I, it brought the attention back um, to you know the heroes I grew in, grew up and loved, and and I I again have, having a page from this. You mentioned this page is sticking in your brain. The one that stuck into my brain, Nick actually owns. Um, and, and it was a page where Ultraman, who's a bad guy on on um, Earth 3. Oh, the, the, um, it's like the, uh, he's, the, uh, he's the villainous Superman guy? Right. right. 
Yeah, right. Yeah. He basically flies into the antimatter wave, knowing yes. he's going to die. Yes. And what struck me about that page is this is a, a villain that you hate. Right. Right. But you and have he's a empathy. Hero. Yeah, but you have empathy for him, and you have yes. yeah, and and that actual page is actually in the the crisis animated movies that are coming on. But that was the page that always stuck out to me as saying, "Holy crap, this is a real." This is the real deal. Crisis was going to really make some changes. You know, Earths are going to live and die. You know, was that Ultraman page was the one that stuck out with me. And Nick yeah. has a really good story on his his posting of that page by what about what that page means to him. Right. Um, but there are some some memorable pages in that. Yeah, but that's, that that's, that's, a, that's, that's a good, yeah, yeah. That's right there. Also, again, one of many. But yeah. another another excellent example that for me, I was like, by the way. I got to tell you, I never even, I had never heard of that guy. I didn't know who that character was. I never heard he was of him. He a boxer. He was a heavyweight champion. No, 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 no. I don't mean, I don't mean Wildcat. I'm talking about oh. the, the Ultraman. Oh, Ultraman. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't know, but I can see by the costume. I'm like, you know, by reading up till then, I was like, okay, this guy looks like he's a, a different world's version of Superman, but evil yeah. or whatever, you know. And I knew nothing other than that, what I could gather just by reading. And yet when that page happened, I was like, I was stunned because I, I was speechless because here's this guy who's like the the villain at Superman and he goes out like a hero. Yeah. For the first time in his life, probably, he, he goes out a hero, you could say, kind of. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it, it was yeah. just, uh, I was like, wow. And, remember, I, I, and I, I grew up knowing who Ultraman was, what Earth he was on, and knowing he was a bad guy. And just like that, he's gone. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And then, of course, you had Flash and Supergirl checking out, yeah. at least for a while. But, yeah, just to have that in my collection, it's like, and again, um, you know, the pages that you're looking at all basically came in the last five years. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, driven by the passion, trying to still find that kid inside of me. You know, as yeah. you get older, you... You want to find things that mean a lot and um all those pages you know mean a lot to me and that's you know that's what i've learned about collecting is that um you know buy pages that mean something to you and don't buy you know cheaper pages that don't you know because then you buy them and you get them and it's like well that's not really what i wanted um save up get get those pages that you want yeah yeah crime syndicate crime syndicate exactly well, there you go, everybody. Uh, that was indeed as Eric, uh, uh, as Rick. I don't know who the hell is Eric. Uh, by the way, where is Eric B tonight? Uh, but as Rick uh, surmised, yes, epic page to end on. It is the last piece uh, in tonight's show and tell. How many uh, people stuck around? I can't tell from the chat. Well, uh, from I, it's not always on my software. It's not always updated, but I'm showing 28 wow. after having a high of uh, 39. So it's well, still thank you, everybody. Still yeah. Yeah, thanks for hanging out. Two thirds, and usually it's the East Coasters that kind of drop off. Right, obviously. You know, during my last hour because they got to go to sleep for work, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I thank you as always, everyone. Really, really appreciate it. Um, just to let you know, as usual, in the last few months, I have no idea what I'm doing next week. Uh, nothing planned. It looks like I may have to just go and do a, a hangout with a last minute guest or something with no plan on what we're going to chat about. Don't know. Um, unless I can make, find somebody to do a last, a last uh, minute uh, agreement to do a, a show and tell. Um, so I don't know. We will see. Thank you, Nick. Uh, for yeah, Nick, we, we just talked you. about your uh, crisis page, Nick. We were talking about crisis and we talked about your Ultraman page. Um, so you were mentioned a couple of times since a number of my pages came from, from your collection yeah. or your show. Yeah, we just spoke about you a little bit during the last piece. Uh, so check out the last piece, at least, Nick, if you want. And, uh, yeah, that'll be cool. That's fun. We talked about crisis. Um, and, yeah, thank you uh, again, Nick, for getting me 4041. So thanks, everybody, for, for, for reaching out and actually clicking the like button. I really appreciate that. Um, you waited around to see if Tom would put on the hoodie. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint you, Marcus. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I thought about it. I'm glad I didn't because then we would have been hoodie twins. That would have been too yeah. weird. <laughs> but um, stick around uh, for a minute, will you, Tom? Don't hang up, please. Yeah, yeah sure. Okay. 
Um, so yeah, everybody, again, thank you so, so much. Thank you to those of you even uh, who already left. Thank you to those of you who um, always watch on Rewind, who are watching this right now on Rewind. I really appreciate you guys as always as well. I hope you had a good time and enjoyed Tom's collection. Um, it was a lot of fun. And again, to those of you still here, um, yeah, I'll, I'll catch you next week. Don't forget Tom, uh, don't, uh, 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 Nick's show. Don't forget Nick's show, um, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 o'clock Pacific on um, the EXP this coming Friday. Uh, thank you, Tom. I appreciate it. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, thanks, everybody. Appreciate the opportunity. Yeah. Uh, Larry and Shaggy, if you're still there. But if you're not, thank you anyways. I appreciate you. Uh, Carl, likewise, I appreciate nice. you. Have a great week as well. Um, yeah. Um, so for me, next Sunday, same time, but no idea what we'll be doing. We may not be doing anything planned. So uh, just be wary of that. Um, okay, so that's it, everyone. Thank you again. And uh, Tom, my friend, thank you for doing this with me. Really appreciate you, man. Uh, yeah, yeah, thanks. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. I hope you enjoyed that. Oh, yeah, I had a good time. I mean, you got okay, to talk cool. about my art. What's better? <laughs> What's better, exactly. All right, everybody. Thank you. Oh, and look at that. Dan is giving you a nice job, Tom. Thank so. you, Dan. Thank you, everybody. And again, thanks for your comments and thanks for uh, hanging out so late. Yeah, thank you all. And have a great week, and we shall see you next week. Peace. Go Blue!